Premier League. Here we go again then, another day, another Premier League football game. Welcome to Craven Cottage on 5 Live Sports Extra. I'm Alistair Bruce Ball. I'm with QPR striker Charlie Austin tonight, and we're going to bring you full commentary of Fulham against Leicester. You can probably hear the, uh, the atmosphere, the music, building up pace in the background. Leicester are out there on the pitch, having made their way from the dressing rooms, and they are waiting for their opponents. Fulham, who've been playing well in recent weeks, but they just can't find that vital win. Seven draws in their last ten Premier League games. Sees them start tonight seven points adrift of safety. Leicester start this evening in fourth spot in the Premier League, but they were given the uh, run around a little bit by Bielsa's boys on Sunday, losing 3-1 to Leeds, which was their first defeat in ten games in all competitions. So here comes Fulham. And they are slowly making their way. It's a great walk, this actually, Charlie. You will have you will have done this, having played at this stadium. It's it's a classic old English stadium, and actually the sort of diagonal walk across the pitch just adds to the drama a little bit. I quite like it. It's a bit different. Yeah, it's it's different. It adds to the drama, especially when Leicester's been out 30 seconds before yeah. Fulham waiting. Um, the dressing rooms are very tight for the away team, so that they'd have wanted to get out early enough, but. They're looking on now, so waiting for the Fulham team to, to hurry up so we can get the game on. Yeah, let's let's bring you the team news as, as Fulham make the walk. And they're not in a sort of uniformed military-style team line. They're slightly in dribs and drabs here as they're making their way to that uh, orange arch Premier League holding that is being held in place either side of the halfway line. And actually, the two teams, as they line up, stand with their backs to us rather rudely. We sit along one side of the pitch. The giant... New Riverside stand, which is still in construction, looming high up in the night sky above them. Scott Park has made two changes to the Fulham team that got, got that very entertaining two-all draw at the weekend. Uh, Tete comes in for Bobby Decadova reed and Harrison Reed, former teammate of Charlie's actually, comes into the Fulham midfield for uh, Mario Lamina this evening. So those are the two Fulham changes. Brendan Rodgers has, has changed it up quite a bit, actually, after the defeat against Leeds. Four changes for Leicester. Uh, Timothy Castagna and Wesley Fofana both not involved at all this evening. Uh, Ricardo Pereira comes in. He's obviously missed a lot this season with injury. Great to see him back for Leicester. Chalar Soyuncu will start at centre-back alongside Johnny Evans. Hamza Chowdhury was talk of a move away in the window, but starts only his second Premier League game of the season this evening. And Kelechi Iheanacho still in the absence of Jamie Vardy, gets the nod through the middle. Um, Charlie, let's start with that one, because Brendan Rodgers has gone with Jose Perez there. He's given Harvey Barnes a go there, I seem to remember, away at He's Arsenal. Um, Ian Acho, chance for him, basically, tonight to come in and try and do the job. Yeah, big chance for him. I feel like Brendan's obviously tried with, with a couple of midfielders to go and play down the middle, but ultimately you do need your strikers to play there. He will need a couple of goals, of course, to raise his confidence, but by having minutes, he, he, that's what he'll need. Did well last season, Kelechi Iheanacho. Ten goals in his 26 appearances. Has three goals this season, but all in Europa League. The two captains at the moment are standing either side of the halfway line. Kasper Schmeichel, that is for Leicester. Joachim Anderson, the giant Dane for Fulham. And then our referee, Robert Jones, just walks backwards to the edge of the centre circle. And the two teams will stand either side of the centre circle. And we are about to pay tribute uh, to the life of Captain Sir Tom Moore, as you will hear here at Craven Cottage. Who sadly passed away yesterday. An army veteran, Tom inspired us with his determination during the most difficult times of the pandemic, raising millions of pounds for NHS charities. We thank and remember Tom now, inviting everyone at Craven Cottage to join in a period of applause.
Lovely picture of Captain Sir Tom Moore just fades from view, uh, which was up on the big screens at either end of the ground here. Black and white picture with a gentle smile on his face, wearing his blazer uh, with his medals pinned to his chest. And actually, I was driving down from from Manchester, having done the commentary at Old Trafford last night, and pulled into a service oh. station on the way down on the M40. Yeah, and up on, on one of the big, giant the screens match. there, there was a Between lovely Leicester picture City. of Captain Sir Tom Moore. Um, just everyone, just touched everyone uh, up and down the country. And, of course, last night, the Wembley Arch, Charlie, I don't know if you know this, but the Wembley Arch was lit uh, in remembrance of, uh, of Captain Sir Tom Moore as well. So someone who's had a real huge impact on us all. Right. Let's get on with the Premier League football this evening. We'll keep you up to date with Burnley Manchester City. That is also kicking off at six o'clock. This, though, is Fulham against Leicester. And as I was saying, Charlie, Fulham, after Brighton's win against Tottenham, seven points adrift. They, they, they've been playing well in recent weeks, can't get the win. They cannot afford for that gap to get much bigger. No, it's seven points after Brighton's big win the other night. I mean, Fulham will, will realise that that tonight's game is very important. They wouldn't want it to get any bigger because the games are coming thick and fast, but that gap will be growing. Yeah. So, Robert Jones, first blast on the whistle, saw the players take the knee here on the banks of the Thames. Second blast of the whistle means we are underway and the uh, Fulham captain, Joachim Anderson, with his right foot, clears the ball downfield aims it diagonally left, Anthony Robinson chases it, clears his head and it goes out for an early Leicester throw. Leicester are defending the goal uh, away to our left, that is the Hammersmith uh, end uh, of the ground, I beg your pardon, it's the Putney end of the ground, the Hammersmith end away to our right hand side, that is the end that Fulham are defending, Fulham in their white shirts with the black sleeves, black shorts and white socks, have a throw on the halfway line and Anthony Robinson launches that down the touchline, Johnny Evans jumps to win a header, and Alexander Mitrovic there, Charlie, just gives him a, a good evening, Johnny, and tries to smash him into the hoardings. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I like that from Mitrovic, letting him know he's in the game early. Um, that's what you want from him. He, he's, he wants a tussle, he wants them battles, and it looks like it's going to be one for, for the full 90. So, Fulham take their throw. Uh, Chowdhury on the ball inside the Leicester half, gets it to Iheanacho, back to Harvey Barnes, toss him, one of the three Fulham centre-backs, just launches the ball skywards with his right foot. James Justin, who's been absolutely brilliant for Leicester this season, down the line to Harvey Barnes, who tries to knock it past Aina, but uh, he gets his body in the way, the Fulham defender, and it goes out for a Fulham throw. Alphonse Ariola in goal for them, Ola Aina, Joachim Anderson and Tossin, the three centre-backs. Kenny Tete, who's come into the side this evening, will play in the right wing-back role. They've got some more defending to do here. Fulham, Iosi Perez is chasing a ball, but it's taken off him, and Robinson is able to break away down the left. So Robinson is the left wing-back. Uh, Harrison Reed and Andre Frank Ongisa in central midfield. Robinson's cross comes in, aimed at Mitrovic, jumps high, can't get the head on it. And actually a free kick given against him. Soyuncu's down, Leicester get the free kick. Loftus-Cheek, Lookman and Mitrovic as a front three. Um, that's an exciting front three, I think, Charlie. And considering you've got Cavalero to come off the bench and Bobby decadova reed as well, but that's the front three that Scott Park has decided to go with this evening. Yeah, and a very exciting front three. And if you look from what Robinson's doing there, he squares up Pereira down the... Down the down the right back position he goes past and puts hell of a ball in and that's what them two the two out of the three will want deliveries in the box especially Mitrovic two minutes in then Five Live Sports Extra Burnley Manchester City is over on Five Live following us this evening on Sports Extra we've got full commentary of Aston Villa West Ham and Five Live will bring you Liverpool Brighton in full uh, tonight hoping this one should be a good game here's little Harrison Reed with the, uh, the ginger hair in central midfield Charlie was having a little chat to him on the phone uh, ahead of the game, he's coming to the side for Lamina this evening on Gisa, who's been a, a constant presence in that central Fulham midfield this season, just bumps into the referee Robert Jones shoulder to shoulder, Harrison Reed plays a ball back to Aina with his right foot lofts one down the touchline for Loftus-Cheek to chase Justin shepherds the ball out of play, throw in Leicester T tell us a little bit about Harrison Reed then Charlie, because you, you would have been with him at Southampton wouldn't you? Yeah, Southampton, he was in a bit of a tough position because there was a lot of lot of players playing in there. Um, but he just needed his chance. He's come to Fulham and done very well and obviously performed very well for them in the promotion winning season last year and hopefully can take his chance this year in the Premier League. So Inchi with his right foot just floats a pass out to Ricardo Pereira, the Portuguese, who tries to play the ball downfield into the shins of Adamola Lookman and out for a Leicester throw. Kasper Schmeichel in goal for them, who was excellent, actually, I have to say, 
despite defeat against Leeds at the weekend. Made a couple of great saves in that game. Over 400 appearances now for Leicester. Title winner as well in 2016. Back four of Pereira, Soyuncu, Evans and Justin. Perez caught here as he played a pass. So free kick Leicester and Iosi Perez is, is down and... Uh, He's not moving too much, he's holding his left leg, so it may be that he needs some treatment. Tielemans and Chowdhury in central midfield this evening, so Nampalis Mendy uh, misses out tonight, he's on the bench. Perez, Madison, Barnes and Ian Acho through the middle. Reed just accidentally trod on his trod on his ankle there, Charlie, it looked like after he'd, he'd volleyed the ball away. Yeah, it looks a, a sore one there for Perez, but I don't think Harrison Reed's meant to do that. It's more of a, a block for him. He's, he's been accidental and stood on his ankle, but he's up now, so, so hopefully we can get on with this. Charlie joins us fresh uh, from scoring on Monday night, an equaliser at Vicarage Road, which led to a 2-1 a, a win for QPR, sitting five points clear of the bottom three in the Championship. And here's Soyuncu with his left foot, and I think Charlie's it's two in four, having joined on loan. So that's that's a nice start, isn't it? Yeah, two in four, nice one in two, which is nice. Get my 50th goal the other night, which were, which was important, a nice landmark to get to, yeah. and, and hopefully there's plenty more to go for the rest of the season. Good, great to have you with us on Sports Extra uh, this evening. Plenty more from Charlie to come. Five minutes in, oh, Leicester have given the ball away. Lookman stretches, it's behind him. On Gisa hits it first time with his right foot. Great sliding challenge by Tielemans. The ball breaks here uh, to Perez, who sprints forward, crosses the halfway line. Matt Madison gets his first touch of the evening, back to Tielemans, who's trying to slide one through to Ianacho, couldn't find him, and then Tielemans uh, and Reed challenge for a 50-50, the ball comes off Reed. Leicester get a throw, Pereira takes it quickly, Ianacho drifts right, his cross is deflected across field, Chowdhury volleys it forward, nice first touch from Aina, just in front of his own penalty area, there's the Serb, Alexander Mitrovic, just bumped off the ball, so Leicester have it, just inside their own half, Soyuncu plays it straight up the middle of the pitch, and Perez on the dribble, finds Madison, Madison runs from right to left, he's got Loftus-Cheek and Harrison Reed in front of him, plays the ball to Justin, wide to Harvey Barnes, Barnes who gave Leicester the lead against Leeds on Sunday, but they went down 3-1 in the end, here's Perez, on the edge of the area, tries to slide it down the line for Pereira, his cross is blocked and Tossin gets a left foot on it, and knocks it out, for a Leicester throw. Wide on the right. Pereira comes trotting over to take that. Leicester all in blue. White numbers on their backs. White stripes down the side of their shorts. And Lookman is caught by Tielemans. You were saying to me, Charlie, just uh, ahead of kickoff before we came. Oh, Manchester City, I can see, are already a goal to the good against Burnley. Let's try and find out who scored that. Gabriel Jesus. He scored in the third minute, but Tielemans, Charlie, you were saying how much you like him as a player. Yeah, I like him. A lot goes through him. His, his defensive qualities are great, but also going forward, he's a player there, just showed his experience to give a, a cheap foul away, but just to, so Leicester can get many bodies behind the ball and, and can regroup so Fulham couldn't hit them on the counter-attack. But for me, he's someone that makes Leicester tick. Absolutely, yeah, been an excellent signing for Leicester, has grown and grown for them. Mitrovic, header forward. And Ricardo Pereira is able to nod it back to his goalkeeper, Kasper Schmeichel, who's in black. And he fires a low volleyed pass, skidding across the floor to Pereira, who thought about an early ball forward, but comes back to Jody Evans. Evans and Soyuncu, which was such a solid centre-back pairing for Leicester last season. Soyuncu's had his injury problems this season. Fafana missing tonight with injury. Here's Schmeichel on the ball with his right foot. Wide to Soyuncu in the left-back position. Down the line he plays it, Reed comes scurrying in to win it back for Fulham. Now on Gieser in his bright orange boots, passes it past Chowdhury, gets Loftus-Cheek on the move, wide to Mitrovic, who's right over on that right-hand touchline. Justin comes in with the tackle and it's gone out for a Fulham throw on the right, Charlie. Yeah, and it's a good play from Fulham. They kind of set, set a couple of traps and the ball's going back to Kasper and Michael. As soon as he makes the pass out to the left-back, they're all over him and all across the pitch. Throw into Loftus cheek, slight miscontrol from him. It was awkward. He was under pressure. Chowdhury's there, clears the ball away. Ian Acho jumps high, but can't win the header. Tielemans then nods it forward, and Madison is pulled backwards by Harrison Reed. Says our our referee. Reed complains, but the free kick uh, goes to Leicester. So eight minutes in, Fulham nil, Leicester nil. Quick free kick, trying to get Ian Acho away down the left, Anderson sticks with him, nice touch and turn from Ianacho, inside the penalty area, shoots with his left foot, takes a deflection, headed away by Tossin, to the edge of the box, on Gieser is there, can't find Loftus-Cheek with the pass, 
but that was that was threatening from Leicester that's quick play from Leicester quick free kick taken caught Fulham napping and, and it's nearly created a chance Leicester have given it away now inside the Fulham half here's on Giesa with his right foot knew that Robinson would be making tracks down that left hand side gets onto the ball and likes to make those driving runs whips that cross in Mitrovic able to control almost lays it off very nearly found Loftus cheek that almost seemed a little bit too easy Charlie yeah almost too easy but I think the Fulham midfielders know that Robinson's going to keep his width and, and that's almost going to be the out ball for Fulham tonight if they keep getting the ball wide because Jose Perez is going to tuck in and almost give Robinson a free run down there Ball forward to Iose Perez on the turn on the halfway line. Madison really smashes that pass here. Nacho, it hits him, comes back to Madison with his right foot, doesn't really test Ariola. Thought that was heading for the top corner, but Ariola on the edge of his six yard box, sticks his hands out and makes a very comfortable save. James Madison uh, is excellent from that sort of range, but uh, didn't quite get where he wanted it there. Here's on Gisa, cross to Reed. Reed wide right to Aina all the substitutes and coaches etc etc over on that side of the pitch in front of the Riverside stand Ariola, the goalkeeper in light green plays it to Tosin who's inside his own area he sort of draws Perez in plays it back to his goalkeeper Ariola. now on to Anderson Fulham happy to play inside their own half deep inside their own half and work it well to the right Tete towards Lookman that was cleverly left by Loftus-Cheek Try to get it back to Loftus Cheek. Justin dummies the ball forwards, and it goes out for a throw in to Leicester. So Manchester City will win tonight, and they're one 0 up early on. Will take them three points clear of Manchester United, having played a game more. Liverpool on 40 points uh, would be seven behind them, but Liverpool at home to Brighton tonight. Full commentary of that game on Five Live. And by the way, tomorrow night on Five Live, Tottenham Chelsea in full, uh, kicking off at. 8 o'clock. Chowdhury to Soyuncu. Cross to Johnny Evans. Evans down the middle of the pitch. Little flick on from Ian Acho. Awkward for Aina who stoops down. James Madison claiming a handball there as Aina tried to deal with it. He sort of bent down and tried to chest it. Probably could have controlled that with his left foot, couldn't he, John? Yeah, I thought he was going to control that. I'm not too sure whether it was handball. However, looking at that, ball Oof. up the top. That is that is a, is a ball they're going to look to play tonight. Yeah, Perez playing the ball way to his left had that been in the penalty area the video assistant referee would have looked at it I, I think he might have given it because I think that was below that t-shirt line we keep talking about but Fulham on the break down the left on geese is away from Johnny Evans into the penalty area tries to cut it back Mitrovic the shot is blocked Mitrovic thought he'd scored and he couldn't get it past Kasper Schmeichel great chance for Fulham early in this game Pereira flicks it forward to Perez Reed's clearance hits Perez falls to toss it in the left back position now Anthony Robinson, or oh, Angisa, trying to be clever there, letting the ball run across his body. Johnny Evans had it covered, and Evans now driving forward. Sliding challenge on him by Loftus-Cheek. Referee says he took the ball. Madison playing through the middle to Ian Acho. Back to Harvey Barnes. Barnes in a central position, 25 yards out to Madison, who very deliberately side foot to pass to his right. Perez is cross in. Tossin heads it up in the air. Madison underneath it, tries to drag it towards the byline and take it past Reed as he goes. Lovely switch pass back here to Pereira inside the box. Cut back to Barnes, gets underneath the shot and fires it over the crossbar. Charlie Austin. It's great play there for Leicester. They're in the, they're in the Fulham half and, and they look like they've, they've really got the bit between their teeth, moving the ball from side to side. It's a big chance there from Harvey Barnes, but he does so well to create opportunity for himself in the box. Harvey Barnes has been in good goal-scoring form this season, 11 in total, 7 in the Premier League. Jamie Vardy still missing at the moment, having had that surgery for the hernia. Brendan Rodgers doesn't think he'll be too far away. I think the stat that the, the Leicester fans won't want to hear, and it's only a three-game stat, is that they've not won without Jamie Vardy involved this season. A couple of defeats against Villa and Leeds at home and a draw against Everton away. But I don't think that will bother them too much because in the past they've managed it without Vardy. But he, he is he is so important though, isn't he, Charlie, to the way that Leicester normally play? Yeah, he's so important, it's pivotal to have. It's, when you lose your centre forward, it is tough, but with a team like Leicester, they are, are dependent on, on Vardy. He gives them so much. Um, but look, they've got players in the round that can get them through this situation and hopefully he comes back soon enough for them anyway. Here's on Gisa on the halfway line uh, for Fulham entertaining start here on 5 Live Sports Extra nice ball forward again to Loftus-Cheek who leaves Chowdhury in his wake rolls it to Tete on the right Tete's cross in Evans with a powerful header away Reed is there for Fulham 
cushions it on the instep, plays it to Aina. Wide on the right to Kenny Tete, the Belgian, who's uh, coming for Bobby Dekadova Reed, uh, who scored at the weekend against West Brom. So he's on the bench this evening, uh, as is Ivan Cavallero. Aina down the right, Tete. Leicester appealing for offside, Loftus-Cheek on the ball, the flag stays down, it might have been one of those that could have gone up late, but Loftus-Cheek down by the byline, holds it up, and then eventually, after Loftus-Cheek has played the pass back to Tete, eventually the flag goes up. I thought, I thought that was going to go up, Trey, he looked offside. Yeah, he did look offside, but it's so frustrating for the players out there. I think the defensive side think it's offside. It's clearly offside, and the attacking team are kind of waiting but don't want to give this up. Yeah. How long this law is going to continue, because... The sad thing is, will it become someone getting injured for them to change it? Which is quite a sad thing to say. It's exactly the point, Charlie, that Mark Lawrenson was making last night because we had we had one of those where a flag went up late and he said at some point play will continue, a player will get badly hurt and, and maybe they should look at it before that happens. Don't be reactive, be, be proactive. Charlie Austin with us here at Craven Cottage. 14 minutes gone first half. Leicester under a little bit of pressure inside their own half, but Soyuncu and Evans link well to deal with it. James Justin, little no-look pass from Justin there, he was looking up the left-hand touchline and without looking just slung it back to Soyuncu and the pass found its target. Pereira on the move down the right, plays in field to Tielemans. Tielemans across here to Chowdhury who wears the number 20 on his back. Good dribble forward from Justin, starting to move in field from the left, chip ball from Tielemans finds Barnes. Barnes onto his right foot, Cross takes a deflection, toss in good power on the header, goes straight up in the air though, Justin jumps with Ongisa, Aina wins the second header, nods it down and Tielemans is there for Leicester. So those missing for Leicester this evening, uh, Fafana we've mentioned, Castagna we've mentioned, Dennis Pratt is out at the moment, Ndidi who is so important as well in central midfield, Jamie Vardy and uh, Wes Morgan not involved either. Here's Chowdhury. Back to Soyuncu, just inside his own half, central position, closed down by Mitrovic, plays it across to Johnny Evans, Evans back to Schmeichel, the one really good chance in the game has fallen to, to Mitrovic, his side-footed effort uh, blocked from the left-wing cross, Harvey Barnes driving his effort over the bar for Leicester. So 16 minutes gone, nil-nil here on Sports Extra, Pereira got a lot of open space to run into here he's very close to us now on the right hand side as he plays it to Madison Madison pokes the ball with the outside of his right foot not enough on it toss it intercepts on Gisa back to Robinson Reed beaten to that by Chowdhury Tielemans gets it back to Chowdhury wide to Madison wants to get that early crossing what a delivery Ian Atro's header less the lead by a goal to nil fabulous cross from James Madison absolutely pinpoint on the head of Ian Atro who guides the header past Ariola and it's Fulham nil Leicester 1. Yeah, it's an unbelievable ball in from James Madison, but before then, the ball, Harrison Reed loses the ball in the middle, it breaks through, Hamza Chowdhury wins it back, gives the ball out to wide to James Madison, it's a hell of a first touch from him and ball in, and, and that is a striker's dream, probably what Mitrovic wants up the other end, but Iniacho, 12 yards out, pinpoint header past the goalkeeper, Leicester 1 nil. Just watching the replays, video assistant referee would be having a look for the offside, but Ian Acho very clearly makes the run from behind the defenders, powers the header home. And as you say, Charlie, lovely for a striker. You've just got to make sure you get that, that contact right, I guess. Yeah, just get the contact right. Be in the right place at the right time. And because if he's not there, James Madison will be fuming. But that is a striker's <laughs> dream. You want to be there. You want to be on end of crosses like that because if they don't come in, you'll soon be moaning. Ian Acho, goal. Madison, assist for those who, who play their fantasy footballers. I know Charlie does. Uh, like myself, recording the latest Fantasy 606 podcast with Chris Sutton and Statman Dave uh, tomorrow. Fulham nil, Leicester one. More importantly, in, in the real world, in real football, and Manchester City uh, leading 1-0 at Burnley. Ariola across here to uh, Anderson. Joachim Anderson, Fulham's captain, on loan from Lyon this season. Left-footed diagonal ball across towards Loftus-Cheek, headed away but only as far as Tete. Tete to Loftus-Cheek, plays it back to Reed. No win in the last ten Premier League games for Fulham. Seven draws, though, out of the ten, and three defeats. A goal behind at the moment. Anderson up the middle towards Mitrovic, tries to lay it off to Robinson or Lookman, couldn't find them. 
and the ball is back to Schmeichel. Yeah, and I think there's just so many bodies in the middle. I think Fulham have had so much joy in the first, say, 20 minutes, getting the ball wide out to the full-back. So I'm very, very surprised they keep trying to force that one into Mitrovic. I get the bit where you can bounce it back and go out again, but maybe forget that and just go wide straight away. Just going to turn around here and see if we can get a thumbs up from our engineer Rob because he's tucking into beef stew. Have you seen? Have you seen the contraption, Charlie? So Rob's basically got a, a plastic box that is a portable cooker, really. Good, Rob. Yeah. Good. Excellent. <laughs> Watch them st stick a little dumpling in. It smells good. Fulham nil, Leicester one. Beef stew on the go at Craven Cottage. Really mild evening here this evening, actually. Soyun Chu on the ball for Leicester. And Leicester actually, with a win tonight, would temporarily go above Liverpool into third place. They'd be sitting on 42 points ahead of Liverpool. Brighton, which kicks off at 8.15. Diagonal ball towards Perez. Perez very casually chests it back to Pereira. Gives it back to Perez wide on the right. Pass intercepted. Then he finds Madison at the second attempt. Madison can't get it back to him. On Gisa dribbles past Perez. Two Leicester players in with the challenge. They have the ball again. Ian Atro making an early run. Perez decides not to go for the cross and instead wide to Pereira. Back to Tielemans is Johnny Evans. Forward to Chowdhury and Fulham for the moment just back off to the halfway line and Leicester playing a little bit of keep ball. Fulham nil, Leicester one. Tielemans floated ball down the inside right channel. Pereira won't catch that but he turns and applauds because he made the run and Tielemans tried to find him. And Tielemans then in turn just puts his hand up and apologises for not getting the, uh, the pass spot on. Fulham then will bring it out from the back with Tossin. Into Ongisa. Back to Anderson. Fulham with this regular lineup now of the, the three centre backs and wing backs. Ball down the right is intercepted by Justin. Chowdhury battles for it on the halfway line. Free kick to Fulham. Reed wants to go quickly. But uh, Robert Jones says that's not from the right spot, and so they'll uh, they'll have to retake it. Ball comes across to uh, to toss in. Anthony Robinson right in front of us here. His heels touching the white line, and he shakes his head in frustration that he he doesn't get that pass. And they're going to go right instead. Nice ball though. Finds Tete. Tete tries to switch it to Loftus Cheek. Cleared by Soyuncu with his left foot. Played across the halfway line to Ongisa. Slightly sloppy ball forward from him, easily intercepted by Chowdhury. Chowdhury to Madison, who was trying to move it quickly to Perez, intercepted by Reed. Madison's chasing back, but he can't win it. And on Gisa, without looking, goes wide left to Robinson, who accidentally lets the ball slip under his heel. But he's okay, he's got it. Finds on Gisa. Ian Acho's there, buzzing around, having scored his first Premier League goal of the season this evening. Three in the Europa League, but that first one in the league, ball down the right to Loftus-Cheek, chests it down, Chowdhury slides in, gets a foot on the ball, and actually it doesn't go out for the corner, Soyuncu's there to clear with his left foot, and that goes out for a, uh, a Fulham throw on the right. Charlie Austin. Yeah, I'd like the ball, Fulham, really, when they've got got the ball, I'd like them to go wide a little bit more. Robinson is, is the out ball for them, either left or right-hand side, that's where they look like they're going to hurt Leicester. I, mean, I feel like they're just going through the middle, and sometimes when they're passing, they're passing it for the sake of it without a purpose, so I feel like they do need to go wide more often than not. Well, at the moment, they've gone back to their goalkeeper. We are midway through the first half here on Five Live Sports Extra. And looking up on that big scoreboard, we can see the, the Fulham badge, FFC, with a, a zero beside it. And the Leicester badge with the, uh, the Fox glaring at us from the middle of that, that blue circle with the number one beside it, thanks to the Ianacho header. Here's Tossin. Long stride as he brings the ball out and stops for a second. Robinson just starting to make a move down the left here, looking for that switch. They've gone down the middle again to Mitrovic. Now Reed has seen the opportunity to go left. His pass unfortunately hits Tielemans, which slows it down. It does get to Robinson. Back to Tossin. Reed on the ball. Reed goes up the middle again to Mitrovic, who's trying to lay it off, but he can't find a teammate. Now Leicester on the counter. Madison with a quick turn is fouled by Harrison Reed, and Leicester get the free kick. It's a foul by Harrison Reed. It is. It is a foul, but before then, they're, they're trying to force it into Mitrovic again. Yes, to be honest, he should hold the ball up and, and do better there, but again, we're just, the Fulham are just trying to force it, and they're, they're passing with no purpose, and, and for me, it looks like they're half going through the motions. Right, and Reed gets booked, so he's going to have to be careful now. Charlie, what's, um, just talking about him as a player, what's he like as a personality? 
Harrison Reed, is he? Uh, he's, good lad? Yeah, he's a very good lad. He, yeah. He's a fiery personality, but one you'd want in the dressing room. He, he brings a lot of fun and, and, and laughter, and that isn't important with a, with a footballer. Sometimes they get in their shell and, and don't let off enough steam, but he certainly brings a bundle to that, and someone I enjoy playing with, and someone I enjoy sharing a dressing room with. Free kick, Leicester. And talking about enjoyment, James Madison is is really enjoying his football at the moment. You can tell that just with the way he's, he's moving, the way he's playing. Madison clips one forward from the free kick. Ian Acho is able to chest it down inside the penalty area. Rolls it to his right. Perez stands the cross up at the far post. Evans attacks it. Sonchu's volley palmed away by Ariola, who had to be quick to get down and block that at the near post. Now Fulham come on the counter. Lookman is running across his own half. Plays it to Aina. And Aina gets the shout to get rid of that quickly to Tete on the right. Tete forward to Loftus-Cheek, back to Tete. Robinson's got his arm up again on the left-hand side. That, that frustration of Robinson so obvious to us because we're sitting so close to him. They've gone up the middle again to Mitrovic. Lookman now hooks a pass wide right, chested down by Tete. Motherwell won, Dundee United nil. Goal in the Scottish Premiership this evening. A couple of early kickoffs there. Chowdhury wants a handball against Loftus-Cheek, he gets the decision, you heard the referee's whistle, and that is a free kick to Leicester, who lead by a goal to nil. So, see what Leicester can do with this, just watching the replay of the, the Leicester free kick to see whether there was a, uh, a potential offside, didn't lead to anything anyway, but the video assistant referee constantly monitoring those images in case anything leads to a, a game-changing incident. So into, blimey, caught that volley well, Charlie. It was a centre forward then. He did. Now, yeah. It's a great save. It's gone through two, three bodies as well. So it's a, it's a great save. And look, Fulham do well to clear it. Harvey Barnes jumps for the ball unfairly. Apparently jumped into Tete. So uh, free kick is given to Fulham. So Man City one up at Burnley. Uh, Hamilton leading Ross County by a goal to nil. So that goal actually went in before the Motherwell one. Leicester one up here at Fulham. And Motherwell leading Dundee United by goal to nil, toss into to Robinson, Robinson infield to Mitrovic, just stops it under the studs of his right boot, plays it to Anguissa, Robinson's having to go back towards his own goal, but plays it across to Reed. Reed quickly forward to Loftus-Cheek with his pace, he's getting away from Chowdhury and Barnes, claims he was clipped, goes down, no free kick, Barnes on the dribble now for Leicester, half tackled by Anguissa, who slides in to try and win that ball, Ian Acho gets a toe in, pokes it into the middle of the field, Lookman is there, lays the ball back to Tossin, and Tossin quickly gives it to the American Anthony Robinson, who was giving Chelsea a bit of bother the last time I was at Craven Cottage, and then rather foolishly got himself sent off in that game just before half-time. Returned to action after the suspension against West Brom at the weekend, and now patrolling this left flank in front of us in this first half. And again, he's, he's standing all alone there, but they've gone towards Lookman. Pereira wins the header, Mitrovic hits the bouncing ball, couldn't keep it down, slices it wide and behind for the goal kick. That is a very difficult skill, Charlie, to try and execute, isn't it? Yeah, it's a very difficult skill, and if it comes off, they fly in the top corner, that's an unbelievable finish, but eight, nine times out of ten, it doesn't go in. It's, it's a tough effort for him, Mitrovic. He's lacking a confidence, and you can see that for me, personally, being a centre-forward, you can see that from him within his play. His hold-up play has not been the best and, and what we are used to, and hopefully he can turn that round with a goal sooner rather than later. Charlie Austin with us here on Five Live Sports Extra. Close-up image of, of Scott Parker, who's rocking the old dark blue polo neck again, with the, uh, the hair very neatly swept across his brow shouting at his team across the field here as Schmeichel clears with his right foot Aina's up there heads it away and out for a throw in to Leicester wide on the left Leicester's away record this season uh, nothing short of superb going into this game played 10 won 7 drawn 2 and lost just the one at Liverpool 21 goals scored well that's 22 now with the goal this evening and just 10 conceded they are very well suited uh, to play away from home. It's not been quite so clever at home. But they're sitting there at the moment, third place in the Premier League, ahead of this evening's games. Chris Long scored a second for Motherwell against Dundee United. They lead Dundee United by two goals to nil. Do, do you fancy Leicester to go top four this season, Charlie? Keep up the challenge all the way through? Yeah, I think so. They're, they're doing 
wonderfully well at the moment. Vardy's obviously out. They've got many players out at the moment and they're picking up wins. I, I can see them being in the top four and it's good to see for the neutral. Yeah. It's good to see is there's five, six, seven teams up there at the moment and it is very good to see it. And the teams are bringing quality. Coming up to half an hour played. Fulham nil, Leicester one. Throw in Fulham over on the right for them. Inside the Leicester half. Tete towards Mitrovic, battling, good physical battle with Soyuncu, who wins it. Nearly given away by Tielemans, has been given away by Tielemans. Robinson is onto it, edge of the area. Looks for that little switch passing to Lookman. Pereira back there, his clearance hits Lookman. Goes out for a throw to Leicester on the right. We were actually talking about you, Charlie, uh, in commentary last night. So I was at Old Trafford for the, uh, you know, obviously didn't end very well for Southampton, your former team, but... In my notes, I discovered that the last time Southampton won a game at Old Trafford, a certain C. Austin scored a, scored a late winner. And you, on your debut, wasn't it? Yeah, on my debut. Uh, it's a nice place to score, oh, especially yeah. on your debut, way to start. We won 1-0. We won so, look, it was, it was brilliant for me. It was a great start to my, my Southampton career. Yeah, I remember it. I remember it. Uh, here's Perez, under pressure from Ongisa. Tries to knock it past Robinson. Slides in on Robinson to try and win it back, and then Robinson gives him a little cuddle, and Perez swings an elbow in his direction, not at his head, but kind of chest tight, but he just was trying to shake him off there, and Robinson points that out to the assistant referee. So Perez with a little frustration. Fulham on the ball inside their own half, trailing here by a goal to nil. Robinson jogging down that left-hand touchline, wants it again, but Tossin goes up the middle to Ongisa, back to... Anderson, Anderson runs forward, plays it to his right, Robinson calls, now has Anderson seen it? No, well he has seen it I think, but he's opted to go right again. Uh, Aina, up that right hand side to Tete, Tete back to Anderson, Anderson now controls the ball with his right foot and plays it across to this left hand side. Tossin takes it, goes back to the right, and Anderson brings it forward across the halfway line. Diagonal ball, headed infield towards Loftus-Cheek. Bumps into Soyuncu, just uses him as a buffer. Lays it off to Reed. Reed's curling ball to Mitrovic. Lays it off to Lookman, couldn't control it. Pinging around inside that Leicester box. Soyuncu clears out for the Fulham throw. I'm not too sure how much more Robinson could take at this. Anderson and Tosin are not wanting to pass to him. The diag's on and, and they really don't want to play. There's acres of space out on this left-hand side. I'm, I'm really unsure why they don't want to pass it out here. It's funny, it's looking deliberate, isn't it, Charlie? It's looking like they're deliberately... Look, he's calling again here on the left. That was a harder pass to, to find him, but it is all going middle or, or right. On Gisa. Uh, gets that wrong. He was trying to play a clever first time, sort of curling ball down the right, and he's, and he's put it into that giant building site on the other side of the field yeah and you can see Robinson going across into the centre pitch now having a moan up at Tosin why he's not passing the ball out here I, I think that is their, their way through and the way through Leicester at the moment is getting down this left hand side but like I say it's almost like the two centre arse have got blinkers on yeah and the other thing as well with that Charlie is um, James Justin obviously has been playing all season and been playing brilliantly and I know Ricardo Pereira is a brilliant footballer but he's missed a lot of football this season so you'd feel that Robinson might fancy his chances against him yeah without match practice you match minutes is what obviously uh, Ricardo is is missing and you can only get that with more games he does play so I, I really don't understand why Fulham are not testing him in this first half okay here we go chance now Ariola with his right foot to toss him what are you going to do toss him Robinson's calling for it on the left in space just doesn't look plays it with his left foot goes for the long diagonal to the right Justin heads it away but only as far as Kenny Tete. That is an early high swinging cross beyond everyone. Robinson will chase that, get to that, and shins it out of play for a throw to Leicester in their right-back position. Leading 1-0 through the Kelechi Iheanacho header from the James Madison cross. Pereira's throw, chested back to him, accidentally by Ongisa, volleyed away, Reed chips one forward, Ongisa heads it on, Mitrovic will run for it, Soyuncu brave, sticks his head in, nods it away, Johnny Evans with a little trick, Mitrovic is chasing, given away by Evans here to Ongisa, Reed inside the penalty area for Fulham, a lot of blue shirts around him, stabs it towards goal, it loops up in the air, and Schmeichel makes a very easy catch, and they, they've, they've actually not been able to test Schmeichel, yeah, have they, Charlie? Mitrovic had the one effort block, that's been it. Yeah, and then... Uh... 
they don't look like they're going to at, the, at this moment. The ball's just not breaking to them there. Harrison Reed's trying to create a chance for himself, but just couldn't get it free. Schmeichel's had nothing really to do. Caught the ball a couple of times and made a couple of kicks. But but like I say, Fulham are playing through the motions at the moment, I feel. Yeah, needs a bit more from Fulham here. Now, that is a bit more from Tossin. He went in hard to try and win a ball and went through the back of Ian Atcher. Before that, actually, Harrison Reed had caught Pereira. And Reed's obviously just got to be a little bit careful on the yellow card in the game. I'm not suggesting that should have been a second yellow card, but obviously uh, referees will keep a count, keep an eye on what's going on. And the free kick here for Leicester is another one that James Madison will, will fancy. Not for a shot on goal, it's a long way out, but one to try and find the likes of Soyuncu or Evans or Chowdhury in the middle. Leicester in control at the moment. Whistle blows, Madison holds his left arm in the air, digs his right foot underneath the ball, Soyuncu wins the header, back across the face of the area, nodded away by Tete, Chowdhury, with that big unruly mop of hair on his head, nods it back uh, into the Leicester half, and Pereira is able to bring it forward under no pressure. Wide to Perez, takes on Robinson, beats him on the inside, lays it back to Pereira, just inside the Fulham half, Tielemans Little one-two with Pereira, wide right to Madison, clever flick with the outside of his boot, down the line to Perez, little jink and a trick from him to Pereira. This is good stuff from Leicester. Ian Acho, edge of the box, quick pass to James Justin, who's in quite a central position there and well forward. Fulham get a foot on the ball and clear it into the Leicester half, so they'll start again with Evans. Evans to Tielemans, Tielemans back to Evans on the right curling pass for Perez to chase against Anderson they bump shoulder to shoulder Anderson got a touch on the ball he's done well to keep that in play down by the byline on the left good defending rolls the pass across Aina and Aina with his right foot launches that downfield so into underneath it heads it out for a for a throw to Fulham right in front of the uh, the manager Scott Parker thrown back towards Anderson Right, here's Robinson, right in front of us on the left. Give it to me. You can see him with his right hand saying to Adrab, <laughs> he's not going to do it, Charlie. I, I just don't, I really don't get the thinking. Does he don't want to pass it with his left foot? Or, or I, I really don't get the thinking. Robinson is on all day long. Yeah. And, it, and he, he's got acres of space down here. Instead, they go down the right and force a pass into Mitrovic, who, who has three men around him because he has no bodies, bodies close enough for him. He's... he's, he's hollering now Robinson he's making the point now as he should be quite rightly because they've just given the ball away there quite easily to Leicester here's Tielemans inside his own half across to Justin Justin plays back to Soyuncu holds both palms out and just says right let's let's slow down let's keep it for a second ten minutes left in the first half we're leading 1-0 Soyuncu to his left to Justin Justin up the middle of the pitch good interception by Ina Taken off him by Ian Acho, ball into the middle of the pitch. Tossing is quickly forward to volley it away, and then then worried about losing his position, so goes back into his own half, and Pereira brings it forward down the right for Leicester. Evans, Evans with his right foot. Ball up to the edge of the area, half cleared. Here's Pereira, little trick from Pereira, tumbles over. The ball was taken. Madison, though, wins the ball and wins a corner for Leicester he tackles Robinson Robinson got the last touch and we'll have a Leicester set piece they leave 1-0 I think Tosin's got to do better there he, he almost half and half goes into the tackle I, I get that he's up worried about getting giving a penalty away but the ball was there go, go and win it and get Fulham out of the problems instead he, he gives away and almost they know Leicester have got a corner they've got to defend yeah made a good tackle there on, on Pereira because he took the ball and then Pereira's momentum took him into his leg and he went down but Pereira wasn't looking for the penalty he knew it was a fair challenge and picked himself up corners taken short to Tielemans now Pereira floats a, a swirling cross to Soyuncu heads it into the back of the net but the whistle had already blown for an infringement in the box possibly a foul that gave Soyuncu the space Raheem Sterling Charlie has a second for Manchester City um, they are looking I mean we've not seen the game we don't know the story of it that's a Soyuncu push by the way on, on Ayin it's good header but but an, but an obvious push but uh, City are looking ominous at the moment aren't they yeah they're looking really good and, and you think back what we're talking 10 weeks 12 weeks when we're thinking oh what's going on with Man City Pep got them going in the right direction um, but look the way they're going forward now they look like they've really got the bit between their teeth and, that, and they want that trophy back hallelujah they've gone left Anthony Robinson <laughs> gets the ball but unfortunately it was a high lofted ball to him and he couldn't do anything with it 
and they've now worked it all the way over to the right. If it ends up in a goal, he won't care. Tete's ball into Mitrovic, can't control it on the edge of the box, runs off his right foot, and Schmeichel uh, slides forward and grabs it for Leicester. So we've got seven minutes left in the first half here on Sports Extra. At half-time, by the way, when Charlie and I will take a little bit of a breather, uh, we're going to play you a little bit of the, uh, the conversation, the Chelsea chat they had on the... Monday night club with Mark Chapman on Monday night so our commentary game tomorrow night on Five Live is, is Chelsea away at Tottenham Chelsea have obviously started well under Tuchel not conceded yet a draw and a win and so you'll hear uh, Chris Sutton Michael Richards and Rory Smith uh, discussing the Tuchel effect so far very early days for him at Chelsea that's on the way for you at half time foul on Justin so that is a free kick for Leicester bit it's a bit too comfortable, isn't it, for, for Leicester tonight, Charlie? Yeah, it's very comfortable for them. When they, Fulham have the ball, they don't have forward runners. If they use it, Mitrovic as a pinpoint, pass it into him and get it to pass it back. Otherwise, you've got to have runners in behind or get the ball wide. I think Leicester are just holding their shape and think, right, come on then, break us down. But Fulham are, and doesn't even look like they're going to try and break them down. Yeah, yeah. I've, I mean, I've seen a lot of Fulham recently and they've been a lot better than this. They look unconvincing um, and a little hesitant this evening. Ricardo Pereira back to Johnny Evans. Forward to Perez. Harrison Reed is there to intercept for Fulham. Buzzing around outside his own penalty area. Rolls it to Aina. Aina across to Anderson. Anderson to Tossin. Robinson wide on the left. Is open if he wants to play it. Now makes the run. Off he goes. Tossin goes low to Lookman. Robinson stops the run and comes back towards him. And they're going to work it to the right-hand side. And the way we keep describing that, it sounds like we're joking about it, but, but we're not. It's, it's so obvious in this first half. Now on Giza sees Robinson wide on the left, floated ball, controls it first time. Into Lookman. Lookman takes on Evans, smashes the low cross into Evans, and it goes out for a throw. What I do like about Leicester so far at the moment is they, they're allowing Fulham back free to have it and think, go on then, come and try and break us come and try and break us down. I don't think you can. And where they're moving the ball, they're not moving it with a purpose, they're just going through the motions. Yeah. Robinson is on all the time. It's almost you can play it blind, but they don't want to. What we need, Charlie, is for them to play it to Robinson for Fulham to score, and that is going to make us look great because we've been We've been calling for it in the in the first half. So let's see. Now Reed sit. Oh no, Reed's tried to find him from a long way off. Pass not good enough. Perez intercepts. Perez looking for the through ball to Madison. Anderson is there to head it away. And Adarabio plays it up to Reed. Reed's got Robinson on on the left. Here we go. Gives it to him. Robinson gives it straight back to Adarabio. Had Perez in front of him and didn't want to take that on. But he is. You can see he's frustrated. You can see he's he's chuntering away here. In front of us, oh, Anderson almost lost it to Madison on the halfway line. That could have been trouble. That could have been a counter for Leicester. But he managed to just win it back. And now playing a couple of one-twos with Aina. Anderson seen the diagonals on for Robinson. That could be interesting. It's beyond Perez. Robinson's there. Takes a touch. Tries to take it round Perez. Bumps off him. Stumbles forward. Challenge comes from Pereira. Fulham want a corner. And they get the corner. It's the first time Anderson has looked up down this left-hand side, I'm sure it is. He plays one big diag in behind Perez, and Robinson's in. Look, they've got a corner, and it's taken them 41 minutes, I think, to play a 40, 50-yard diag out to this left-hand side. Yeah, when they've hit quite a few of them the other way, haven't they, Charlie? They've hit that ball a lot to the right, yeah. but not so much to the left. And that's what I don't understand. I can see the Fulham... You'd expect the Fulham team to be looking up from above opposite us and be able to see that, because we can see it clearly. Yeah, corner Fulham, trailing 1-0... Five Live Sports Extra with Charlie Austin here as Lookman holds both arms in the air, runs to the ball, floats it in with his right foot, back post, free header, Schmeichel tips it over the bar, tossing was up, there was no one around him, powered it at goal, pretty much straight at Schmeichel, and he was able to palm it over the bar. Yeah, and I think that's why one, he's one of the best keepers in, in the Premier League, he hasn't had nothing to do and he, he has one big save to make and he's called upon definitely for his team, it's a superb save. Yeah, Chowdhury was behind him but he was behind the line, so I think if that beats Schmeichel, that's in. So he saved his team there, Lookman again goes for that far post delivery, Tossins up, gets a header on it, goes out to the edge of the area, Reed, oh, Reed was caught, edge of the box, he's down, play continues, Tielemans intercepts the cross, Bumps into Mitrovic, Tielemans plays it away to Perez. Tielemans on the charge, having played that pass, is on his way down the middle. Perez is holding on to it, loads of white shirts around him. Good support from Ian Acho on the right-hand side. Ian Acho back here to Tielemans. Tielemans across to Chowdhury. This is 10 yards inside the Fulham half. 
A couple of minutes remaining in this first half here at Craven Cottage. Fulham nil, Leicester 1. But you could see immediately on Tielemann's mind there, as soon as he played that ball, was that the counter was on and I'm on my bike. And it made me think of that, that fabulous goal that Liverpool scored against West Ham at the weekend when uh, Alexander-Arnold found Shaqiri hurtling down the left and then played that lofty ball into Salah. And that, that one-touch, two-touch from Salah was absolutely delicious. Chowdhury to James, to Chowdhury and back to Soyuncu. Across to Johnny Evans. Evans with his right foot into midfield finds Tielemans. Leicester controlling the game as we approach half-time on Five Live. Sports Extra up to Ian Acho, the goal scorer. Nice turn. And finds Madison, and Madison could be through here, up to the edge of the area, onto that right foot, back onto the left foot, plays it in, chance round the keeper, and scored! James Justin finishes it off for Leicester, a brilliant move which started inside their own half. Madison, so cool in the final moments there, to set it up for James Justin, who did brilliantly to go round Areola and tuck the ball away to make it Fulham nil, Leicester 2. That's a breathtaking goal from Leicester. James Madison has just shown his quality. He, he's picked the ball up and just gone forward. He, the pass is in there by Inanato, which is unbelievable. He could have been selfish himself, James Madison. He does a Cruyff turn, takes two players out of the game, and unselfishly just rolls the ball across to James Justin, who is, takes his first touch past the goalkeeper and rolls it into an empty net. That's an unbelievable bit of play from James Madison. Fabulous goal from Leicester, created by Madison finished by one of the players of the season in James Justin. I, I thought that was going to be Harvey Barnes popping up there, but James Justin appeared. And uh, the video assistant referee just had a look at two moments in the move, potential offsides as Leicester broke forward. But uh, it's OK, I think the referee's just saying wait. But no, we're good, we're good. And I'm pleased the goal stands, Charlie, because it, uh, it was a joyous goal to watch. And we were about to kick off, but the Fulham players went early, across the halfway line before the ball had been played. And Fulham now looking in a bit of bother this yeah. evening. They do look in a bit of bother. But the thing is, they, they, they've kind of brought on themselves. They're not playing with no urgency. They're, they're not pressing. They're not moving the ball quick enough. They're not getting the ball wide. And it's almost too easy for Leicester. And they're good for their 2-0 lead. Yeah, Tielemans in the heart of that Leicester midfield. And that bottom three at the moment in the Premier League are really getting cut adrift as you look at it at the moment. Fulham actually in 18th spot. Seven points behind Brighton on 14. Heiner's lost it. Leicester come again with Barnes, looking for a third just before half-time. Barnes at pace into the area, shoots, Ariola saves with his feet, and the ball comes fizzing out to Loftus-Cheek under no pressure. He's able to control and turn and go. So Fulham yet on 14 in the bottom three. West Brom on 12. Sheffield United, who've, uh, who've had a little resurgence recently on 11. But Brighton on, on 21, way above them. Burnley losing tonight on 22, as are Newcastle. Half-time whistle blows at Craven Cottage. Very comfortable for Leicester. Looking for the bounce-back win after the home defeat uh, against Leeds. Two good goals uh, scored in that first half by Leicester City. Both created by James Madison. The first with a wonderful cross under the head of Ian Acho. Powerful header from him. And the second, actually, uh, Charlie, I wouldn't be surprised if that features in a, in a sort of goal of the month compilation on, on match of the day at the end of February, because it, 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 was, it was lovely, wasn't it? It was just a team goal. And then the, a team goal from back to front. And then when we get on the edge of the box, James Madison just shows a little bit of individual quality that takes two Fulham players out of the way. James Justin comes, and like we say, we think it's Harvey Barnes, but it's not. James Justin comes busting into the box. One touch bar to sc pass the goalkeeper and rolls it into an empty net. Leicester have been superb that first half. But I do worry for Fulham. Yeah, if you're if you're Scott Parker, Charlie, what what what's what's he got to say? What's he got to change? What what's he got to do? Because they they've been better than this in recent weeks. This is quite poor from them tonight. I feel like we've said it three, four, five, six times in the first half. They need to get the ball wide out to yeah. Robinson on this left hand side. He might see it a lot more now. Robinson being over the other side. Honestly, he's got to go in there and he's got to keep their spirits up. And that's a tough thing to do as a manager after watching that first half display. Yeah, very tough. Uh, for Fulham at half-time at Craven Cottage. They are trailing Leicester by two goals to nil. So as things stand ahead of the evening kickoffs, that has Leicester in third spot in the Premier League uh, table. Two points behind Manchester United, five points behind Manchester City, who are 2 nil up away to Burnley uh, at half-time. Gabriel Jesus and Raheem Sterling with the goals there. 
Uh, other scores for you this evening, not quite as busy as last night. A couple in the Scottish Premiership. Uh, Hamilton lead Ross County by a goal to nil at half-time, and it's just reached half-time at Fir Park. Motherwell lead Dundee United by two goals to nil. Now, commentary game uh, on Five Live tomorrow night is Chelsea's trip to Tottenham. Thomas Tuchel uh, has just taken the reins at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea haven't conceded in those first two games in charge. And you, as I say, you can hear full commentary of the game on Five Live tomorrow night. Should be a cracking listen. On this week's Monday Night Club, Mark Chapman discussed the idea that Tuchel may have been brought in to get a little bit more out of Chelsea's big money signings that have been struggling for form under Frank Lampard. He was joined on the Monday Night Club by Michael Richards, Chris Sutton, and Rory Smith. On the Football Daily Podcast, this is the Monday Night Club with Mark Chapman. Thomas Tuchel then made it two wins from his first two matches. No, he didn't. He made it... He got Win and a draw. He, he, he Win and a draw. draw, but they haven't conceded a goal as Chelsea manager. He's gone to a back three, two clean sheets in a row. Is this simply, Chris, going back to the Antonio Conte system that suited a, a few of these players? I think it's been really interesting that he's uh, that he's gone to a back three. Um, I think Rory will know his history a little bit better at, uh, at PSG and Dortmund in the style of which Tuchel plays. I think it's been a, a, a really positive start because no doubt it was a trying start people you know looking at the situation you know when frank left wanting an immediate bounce and they've 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 sort of done that can you get overly excited as a chelsea fan because they've drawn nil nil against wolves and beaten burnley probably not but i I thought that uh all things being equal it was a really really strong performance against burnley and the team will get a lot of confidence and you know we talked about interesting picks rudiger i have to say at the start of the season this this has been a head scratcher for me if you'd have asked me who's Chelsea's best centre half I would have said Rudiger so I don't understand uh, you know rumours of a fallout between Frank and Rudiger I don't know but I think that was a mistake from Frank to leave him out uh, he's back in Thiago Silva's you know no doubt uh, has real authority at the back and is an organiser as Balaqueta coming in and you know he's building from the back I still think that they have problems they have such a, uh, an array of attacking players but he still hasn't found the answer with uh, with Timo Werner who is having a, a bad bad time of it and, and that will be something heard him speak about him that uh, he's certainly trying to address but all things being equal it's a good start for Tuchel Chris you know Werner's going through obviously a, a difficult time now what 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 do you see in his game that he's not doing that he should be doing because he's getting into the right positions he, he really is I was doing match of the day too mm. yesterday and uh, Hudson Adai was putting some fantastic balls into the right areas, but he's doing everything apart from that final bit. What what what's he doing wrong from a striker's perspective? You, you can see his confidence is shot to pieces. I think the one you yeah, there's a cross in the first half, and he is just snatching at things. He you know he he's, he's he isn't balanced, and I think that 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 happens uh, when you lose a little bit of confidence. And the other thing which I think with him. Uh, is his hesitating and as a, as a striker you cannot hesitate you have to be proactive you have to be on the front foot and you have to anticipate where crosses are going and and he needs something to go for him at this moment in time i mean he's been pretty prolific uh, throughout his career he has blistering pace i have to say from what i've seen of him over the years i wouldn't say he's a natural finisher but at this moment in time he's you know at at, at a real real low and it's one of those things you just have to go back to the drawing board, back on the training ground, and just repetition, 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 even hitting the balls into an empty net, and, and just just practicing those, you know, those crosses whipped in, and and just getting the the correct uh, contact on it, and and that's how you find your way back informed. We we had quite an interesting discussion, Mark, didn't we, about um, what what a manager and what teammates can do to try and help someone in the situation that Werner is going through. But a lot of the team bonding, trying to take the pressure off be part of a collective etc has gone out the window at the moment because you can't do any of that even to the extent of hanging around training grounds once training is finished you know once training is finished you're out of there i think in the efl that they're, they're not even allowed to shower afterwards are they? they've got to just get back in the car and go and shower at home so that that collective belonging i know chris is scowling because it's as if he doesn't believe in all this but that collective belonging and trying to help someone fit in has actually been taken away from the armory of teammates and the manager at the moment yeah um i know chris is snarling but 
But he never got any I... invitations to any team bonding sessions. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it can so you assume they didn't happen. It can make a massive difference in terms of getting your mind off football because when you're in football, it's twenty four seven. You 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 know you you just want to eat, sleep, and eat everything football. But when I was going through a bit of a, a bad time through my career, which was quite a, a, a lot of my career, to be oh, honest. Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> come on. But, but, I mean, J- Jolene Lescott and Joe Hart, James Milner, took me out. Just, they took me to bowling. They said, Meeks, what, what's up with you? Why, why, why are you not playing your, your normal self? And sometimes... There's no answers for that. You know you, you know what it's like, Chris. When you're a footballer, you overthink absolutely everything, don't you? You do. But when what type play- of bowling was it? Was it Graham Green or was it... <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, how does that build your confidence when you throw the first one down the gutter? Oh, yeah. what did well, we you bother? Put the sides, you put the sides up, don't you, if you throw it in. <laughs> Can you imagine you the headlines from a... tonight? Monday Night Club says, take Timo Werner, crown green bowling to solve, <laughs> to solve <laughs> all his problems. <laughs> A ridiculous suggestion. Look, you, you, you always, you look, you always spin the conversation, don't you? I was talking about my personal experience. I'm not, I'm not suggesting the Chelsea lads take him to bowling, and they can't do anyway because it's COVID. But what it it's did the do point, for me, isn't it? It's the yeah, point. What, what it yeah. did do for me, it showed people cared, <laughs> and you know, in the football, in the football mm. world, it's it, it's difficult because. When, when, when things are not going well, it, it seems like you you against the world. But that little pep talk that they give me, it, it really helped me. And it, it just, I got back into the team and I start playing, started playing well. But it, it might have not have been from that moment, but it shows that, you know, I had good teammates around me. And he, he just looks like he needs a hug. He just looks so yeah. low on, on confidence that... You know, I, I, I tipped him as one of the signings of the season and I, I, I really do believe in his ability. I think I think he's a, a tremendous player. Like, playing against that, he's, he's got everything. He's, he's quick, he can he can run in behind, he's good on the ball, he, he normally can, can finish so, so easily. Rory will probably give us a bit more background because you probably watched him more in Germany. But all the clips that I've seen, and I've watched him a good 20, 20 times... You wouldn't describe him off- as a natural finisher. I well, wasn't saying he's a good finisher though. He's mm-hmm. a good finisher. Natural finisher. You don't get many natural finishers in in the game, but you get good finishers. And his movement, the way he used to just hang on the, the back of the, the right back and move inside, mm-hmm. and then have that little Thierry on refinish, and he used to whip it into the far corner. He used to do that all, all the time. All the goals I've watched, a lot of uh, have, have been like that. So. I, I'm keeping the faith of him. I still think he he will be a a top striker. But you know what it's like in this football game. If you know if you're not doing the business, you, you're going to get replaced. Rory, who, who was the best at bowling? <laughs> <laughs> that I actually won the bowling. I don't yeah. know if they made me win for my confidence, but, <laughs> but I won. Yes, I won, Rory. I think funny the thing with Werner, funny enough, from Germany is. I'm not sure that anyone would have expected him to go through a kind of confidence crisis but so much as the exact opposite. I think he always had a reputation as being very, very self-assured and in a way, two in its then like Stuttgart where, where I think he started his career, that it, it was maybe slightly too much that way rather than the other way. As, as we said before, that Werner, like the underlying data of what Werner's doing suggests that he's doing all right, like he's missing the chances but he's, his shot locations are fine and he's making the runs and all that stuff. And I, I actually think it's, it's an interesting sort of an interesting case for for where the the underlying data, like the data of his performance, falls short. Because there is some intangible where something has gone in Timo Werner that that I think people who worked with him previously wouldn't have thought could go. Does he always seem so self confident? And he, uh, my guess is he doesn't really know how to get it back, short of the the kind of the cliche that he needs to go in one and he needs one to go in off his toe or something. But I think having Tuchel there should help. Does he? Although they've never worked together before, I don't think they they do have a sort of similar like philosophical background that you know Tuchel worked with Rangnick, Vern came through at, at Leipzig, which is Rangnick's big kind of project. They have they're stalled in the same style of football. They Tuchel will expect the same things from Werner that Werner is used to doing at, at Leipzig, particularly. That should all help, but I, as Mike says, it just looks like he's he, he's just a sort of shadow of himself. Really. Do you, and, do you and think how you get right? that back? I don't know. Do you think that was a large part of why Tuchel was was brought in because the signings weren't firing, and Tuchel would having... Tuchel, Tuchel would know Werner 
Havertz better than Frank? I would I would hope it wasn't that he'd know them because he's never worked with either of them. They're just German and they don't all know each other Germans. Uh, there's 80 million of them, it's too many. Um, to all know each other, not too many, full stop. The, <laughs> <laughs> just to make that abundantly clear. The, um, the, the, I think, from what I've read and from the bits that I've heard, I think the Kepa thing spooked Chelsea, that, that Lampard wanted to sell Kepa in the summer and had given up on him, had gave up on him in sort of February last year, whenever it was he dropped him for, for Caballero. And Chelsea looked at that and thought, well, hang on, this is a £71.6 million goalkeeper. You can't just give up on him because you don't think he's good enough. You kind of have to get more out of him. And I think Chelsea Frank's looked at what Frank's not a goalkeeping with... coach. No, but I think what Chelsea looked at with Werner and Havertz was, well, if he gives up on them, then that's £140 million quid down the drain. We can't do that. So we have to get a coach in to get the best out of these players. And as brutal as it is, and as much as you can debate the rights and wrongs of the decision, it kind of makes sense. You're listening to Five Live Sports Extra. The Premier League. Yeah, that was the Monday Night Club with Mark Chapman, Rory Smith, Michael Richards and Chris Sutton discussing Chelsea, uh, Thomas Tuchel and the impact he's had. We've got Tottenham Chelsea in full for you tomorrow night on Five Live. And by the way, if you want to watch the Monday Night Club, that is available at the moment uh, on the BBC iPlayer. So you can watch that debate uh, in progress. The podcast is also available via the BBC Sounds app, as are all of our um, sporting podcasts. The 72 Plus pod, for example, that Charlie Austin here was uh, was on uh, a couple of weeks ago. Charlie, here back here at Craven Cottage for people just joining us. Fulham nil, Leicester 2. I'm looking at, at, at Scott Parker coming across the pitch here quite early out of the dressing room. He's obviously had a word, and they're going to make a change at, at half time. I mean, they had to do something, didn't they? Because the first half was really quite poor. Yeah, they was quite poor, and he's come across there looking like he's got a lot off his chest. Yeah. Uh, I've just seen them coming out trying to work out who, who has come off. It looks like Nguyen has come off. Right. They need. They definitely did need to make a change, and, and it looks like Lamina's going to come on. I, I know him personally. We played together at Southampton. He will give them a lot of energy, but he will be someone that will look to get on the ball and spray it wide, and that is what Fulham need. Yeah, Mario Lamina's coming on. We're just watching him going through the warm-up routine at the moment on loan uh, from Southampton. Southampton, who got him from Juventus. So that's going to be the one change at half-time. And there just needs to be a change in belief and, and attitude and everything, really, from Fulham. Leicester, for their part, Charlie, have, have been impressive, as they have been all, all season, haven't they? They've been so impressive, and, they, and they've been solid, and they've been compact, and they've moved from side to side, defensively and attackingly. They've allowed the three Fulham centre-halves to have the ball and say, right, come on, come and break, come and show us, try and get through us. And Leicester have gone, come on, break us down, and they haven't. They haven't been able to, which has been good to see from Leicester. The only thing I would like to see from Leicester side in the second half is a bit more Harvey Barnes. Yes, and actually, Charlie, you made the point, just as, just as we came off at half-time, that... We're sitting in the perfect position if he is going to get more of the ball to watch him in action because he's on this this touchline right next to us because um, he's another one who's had, who's had a brilliant season. He's just he's not he's not really featured in that first half that much, has he? No, and he's been quiet. Maybe that's because it's come down a lot down this right hand side or, or down the middle to the right hand side. But he, he's someone that shows just before half time he's broken on and he's had a good save from Aziola. But for me, he's someone that has performed very well and he needs to perform again, continue to perform in the second half of the season and go right into Gareth South Gates' plans for the Euros. Yeah, no, I agree. They're back underway at Turf Moor, by the way, so that's the commentary on Five Live at the moment. Manchester City leading Burnley by two goals to nil and going three points clear at the top of the table. Leicester are 2 nil up here. Uh, back underway at Fir Park, Motherwell 2, Dundee United nil. Hamilton 1, Ross County nil at half-time. And Rotherham Derby... Uh, has just kicked off in the championship. Now, I think that was supposed to be played last night and got called off because of a waterlogged pitch. So they're underway this evening. And that will have, um, just thinking, Charlie, with, with QPR in mind, that is that is a game, an important one, isn't it? Rotherham sitting in the bottom three and Derby on 29 points, which is a, a point behind you. So um, just before we get underway, Charlie, how... How is it at QPR? Are you happy? You yeah. enjoying it, yeah? Yeah, very enjoy enjoying it. I've got a purpose back. Look, we've won one three out the last four. It's, yeah. And it, we're looking forward. Obviously, the Sheffield Wednesday winning last night was a bit of a blow for us. But look, we've got a five-point gap, and hopefully we can continue going up that table. Second half underway, and when we do get a break in play in the second half, I, I will just ask you as well about playing under Mark Warburton um, and, and, and what that's like. And, you know, the career he's had, obviously, great success with Brentford up to Scotland to... Uh, to, uh, to work with Rangers as well. But let's concentrate on the football here. So Lamina's on for Fulham. 
Leicester lead 2-0. They're defending the goal away to our right. That's the Hammersmith end. Leicester in all blue with white trim. And Fulham in the white shirts with the black sleeves, black shorts with the white stripes down the side and white socks have won an early throw. Second half, which Ola Aina will take. He's got a long one as well, right into the penalty area that goes. Evans heads it away. Reed heads it to his left-hand side, only as far as Perez. Perez clears with his right foot. Ian Acho battles for the ball. Aina flicks it over his head. Chowdhury making only his second Premier League start for Leicester this season, makes the interception. So Brendan Rodgers freshening it up, which, which will help Leicester because, as we keep saying, the games are coming thick and fast. Leicester away at Wolves on Sunday, then FA Cup fifth round at home to Brighton next Wednesday before a home game against Liverpool. Eight games in 25 days starting today because they've also got the, uh, the two Europa League games this month against Slavia Prague. Fulham at home to West Ham on Saturday. What have Fulham got to show us, I wonder, uh, in this second half? Will Scott Parker's half-time address uh, have had an impact? Lamina, who plays with his socks rolled down, plays a pass across the pitch to his right. And Anderson is able to bring it forward. And he goes for the diagonal. And Cavalero uh, is there. So double change at half-time. Haven't spotted that. Cavalero uh, on for Fulham. Bringing the ball back towards Harrison Reed. Reed running to his left-hand side. Finds Lookman. Robinson again. Left stranded, wide on the left. Lamina plays it here to Reed. Reed down the left to Robinson. Back to Reed again. A bit more pace and purpose here about Fulham early in the second half, needing to get back in this game. Kenny Tete uh, was the other man to make way. So Ongisa and Tete off, Lamina and Cavalero on. Loftus-Cheek will want more involvement from him as well. Lookman drives on low, Cavalero with the shot, fizzing just wide of Schmeichel's post and behind for the goal kick. But that was a bit better, Charlie. Yeah, a bit better for Fulham. They've start, started this second half very brightly. I feel like they've gone to a flat back four with, uh, and then put Reed and Lamina just holding as, as the sitters. But then put Loftus Cheek and Lookman have tucked into like as a number 10s, two number 10s, and Cavalero's joined Mitrovic up front. He's done so well there, Cavalero's got into the space and got his shot off. But for the first three minutes, they've showed more energy and purpose going forward than what they did out the whole first half. Yeah, and good to see Scott Parker not delaying either. So he's made two of the three changes, made them straight away. The game was drifting away from Fulham and he's going to try and grab it and, and do something about it. Because don't forget, they've, they've not won, fun enough, since they beat Leicester. That was back in November when they won 2-1 at the King Power Stadium. And like we've been saying, they've, they've played well in plenty of games since then, but just haven't been able to find the win. Lovely dummy from Tielemans. Fooled Cavalero, plays the pass forward, intercepted by Reed. And Harrison Reed on the halfway line for Fulham. Playing back here to Anderson. Diagonal. Now that is a good ball. Finds Robinson. Leicester say he handballed it. Referee Robert Jones doesn't agree. Tielemans goes to ground. Free kick Leicester early in the second half. Ariola in goal for Fulham. Still the back three then. Aina, uh, Anderson, and Tossin. But with Tete off, you've got Reed and Lamina uh, in central midfield. Anthony Robinson is, is wide on the left hand side. Tossin has to chase back here for Fulham and knock the ball behind uh, for a corner. And Cavalero has come on in support of Lukman, Loftus-Cheek and Mitrovic to give Fulham a little bit more going forward. Leicester, a Schmeichel in goal. Pereira, Soyuncu, Evans and Justin, uh, who scored his third goal of the season tonight. Leicester second of the game. Tielemans and Chowdhury in a 4-2-3-1. Perez, Madison, who's created both goals and is about to take this corner. And Harvey Barnes with Ian Acho through the middle so Leicester achieving this without some of the big guns like Vardy and Didi uh, Castagna Pratt Fafana which will delight Brendan Rodgers four minutes gone second half five live sports extra Tielemans left footed cross far post Soyuncu waiting heads it back across goal nodded away but down by Barnes Chowdhury has a shot spins here and the ball is fired home must be offside Perez is, is miles offside as he shoots with his left foot uh, and disappointed that his goal won't count. I, I'm not. I think Perez is onside there. Do you? you? Know? If Iniesta doesn't touch this, oh. I think I think Perez is in. I honestly do. I, I think he's in. Yeah. Ball to the far post. Iniesta's in that offside possession. Comes back slowly. No, both offside. Both off. Both, both offside. offside. Good line from Fulham. Yeah. Yeah. Iniesta side footing home with his left foot, but he knew he was he was standing well offside. Five minutes gone, second half. That would have killed it. But as it is, Leicester still lead by 
two goals to nil. Here's Cavalero, who's already seemed to have made a difference. Hooks the ball away to his right. Aina at pace. Stoops to chest this ball down, almost overruns it. Cross comes in, Chowdhury blocks it. Justin hooks it away with his left foot into the stands. And out four, throwing to Fulham on the right. Looks better, though, Charlie. Yeah, it does look better. In the first five minutes, the urgency, the, the subs that have come on. Cavalero's got close to Mitrovic. And the first thing he, the first thing he's done when the ball's come up to his chest, and he's sprayed the ball out to the right-hand side, where the loads of space is. He Ayn must definitely been watching the first half. Yeah, Aina's throw in, flicked on by Loftus-Cheek, hit Mitrovic and goes behind for a goal kick to Leicester, but a bit more of a threat early in the second half. One goal in 14 games. Sorry, not scored in his last 14 games, Alexander Mitrovic. Three goals for the season, uh, but the last one was a, a wee while ago. So Fulham could do, given in the service for a start, and they could do with him trying to stick one away this evening. Schmeichel clears with his right foot, Barnes jumps and uh, just gets a glancing head on the ball and it goes behind him and out for a throw into Fulham inside their own half. Here on Sports Extra, after us, Villa West Ham kicking off at 8.15. Full commentary on that one. Five live, you've got full commentary of Liverpool Brighton. Don't forget as well, in between that, Leeds Everton uh, gets underway at, at half past seven. How impressed, Charlie, have you been with, with... I mean, I think everyone's been impressed with with Leeds this season. Did you expect that from them this season? From what I see last year, I expected them to bring the energy and the pressing side of it, but their recruitment, the money they've spent has been superb. They spent it in places they needed to. But what Bielsa's has done is he's, he's put confidence in the players that's got them promoted. Phillips, Bamford, Luke Aylin. I think that's good to see, and that gives a lot of players the confidence to then think, right, Leeds United are going to give me the chance. If I'm linked with Leeds United, that's something that I'm going to take up because I want to play for that big club. It's Charlie Austin with us here at Craven Cottage. Sounds like helicopter blades are roaring overhead as the ball goes out of play inside the Fulham half for a, a, a Fulham throw. Slowish start to the second half, but it's up to Fulham now to make this game. And actually, Leicester, the way they play, will love it. If Fulham come onto them and they leave a bit of space for Leicester to counter, that suits Leicester down to the ground. Lamina plays it back to his goalkeeper, Ariola, who sends one high into the sky. Mitrovic enjoying the battle with Evans, manages to get the ball back to Loftus-Cheek. Awkward one, can't quite control it. Eventually does so, plays it to Aina wide on the right. Mitrovic lays it off to Reed. Early ball from him, takes the deflection. Evans is there, clears for Leicester. Underneath it is Anderson, heads it towards the halfway line. Perez nods it down to Chowdhury. Miscue from Chowdhury with his right foot and Anderson is able to come back to his goalkeeper plenty more Premier League football on the way uh, at the weekend as well highlight of which has to be Five Lives commentary half past four Sunday afternoon Liverpool host Manchester City uh, which is a mouth-watering prospect the way the season's going Cavalero on the dribble for Fulham stopped by Perez but Fulham still have it with Lookman Lugman, clever drag back, takes it away from Tielemans into Mitrovic, edge of the area, trying to get it back to Lugman. Leicester get bodies in the way. Here's Harvey Barnes on the breakout for Leicester inside his own half. Tielemans plays it to his left, finds Justin. Justin towards Madison. Assured first touch, as always, to Iheanacho on the left. Iheanacho with a little bit of silky dribbling. And the ball's with Chowdhury on the halfway line. Across to Justin, again, crisp, firm pass. Finds Tielemans towards Perez. Ball just bounces on him. Hooks one over the top of the Fulham defence. Headed away, only as far as Madison. Danger with Madison lurking on the edge of that Fulham box. Trying to work space for a pass or a shot. Gives it to Barnes. Barnes stretches, can't get a contact on the ball. Fulham bring it away and wide to Cavalero. The pass is hit and it goes out for a throw-in to Leicester on the right. Charlie? It was good play there from Leicester. James Madison's looking for a 1-2 from Harvey Barnes and, and they've just re read it a little bit. Harrison Reed's done well. Fulham have held the line there. But it's almost like Fulham have come out the second half and whatever Scott Parker has told them in, in that half-time, they've come out and gone, right, we've got a point to prove it. We're 2-0 down. We can't perform any worse. Yeah. So come on, let's have, roll our sleeves up and have a right go. Brendan Rodgers enjoying a cup of, of something warm over on the other side of the field and will be very satisfied with this evening's performance so far. Toss him with his left foot. Might have been told by Scott Parker to give it to the left. I think that's the first time I've seen him do it this evening. Plays it to Robinson who gives it straight back to him as if to say thank you very much. Let's do that again. Anderson 
driving run out of the heart of the Fulham defence and he goes left and gives it to Robinson and Robinson gets the motor on and starts speeding down the left and Ferreira steps in and makes the tackle and it goes out for a throw to Fulham they're trailing 2-0 and it's Robinson who gets ready to take the throw with the ball above his head launches it infield, good first touch from Lookman lines up a dipping shot which just eventually dips over the crossbar Schmeichel had it covered but, but not a bad effort from from Adam Ola Luckman. Goal kick for Leicester, who lead by two goals to nil. Schmeichel goes to gather the ball, one of the replacement balls just down the slope, sitting on a, a plastic cone behind the goal. I can see Mark Albright and one of the Leicester substitutes warming up. More games coming at the weekend, so managers will. Oh, Scott Park has already made two of the changes, but I'm sure. Brendan Rodgers, particularly if Leicester get a third, might look at, at changing things and, and giving some, some key men a rest. Schmeichel doesn't want to go short here. He waves everyone up the field and gives it a good old heave-ho right down the, uh, the middle of the pitch. Anderson, great leap, wins the header. Tielemans nods it back to Barnes, controls it on his thigh, plays it back to Justin. Chowdhury on the stretch, not a great ball to Chowdhury, and he's knocked it straight out of play for a, for a full and throw. One thing I do like from Leicester is... They're two 0 up away from home. Although they can, they've got a goal kick. They're not looking to play, and the moment they do look to play, if Shamarkel says no, he waits for the whole team, gets them up the pitch, yeah. and then bangs the ball up there. Because so many teams that look to play and overplay, and it's quite easy to do that in this situation at 2-0, but I feel like Leicester are managing the match well. That's a lovely ball from Aina with the outside of his right foot, and Loftus-Cheek is sprinting and cutting infield from the right, gets the pass to Lookman quickly, oh no. Didn't get it right. Cavalero was in space on the left. You could see what he was trying to do, and he just couldn't get it on target. It's gone behind for the goal kick. But they've offered more of a threat in the second half, and Leicester have had to uh, had to concentrate at the back. If they can win it, Leicester, uh, it will be only a, a second win in ten visits to Craven Cottage. But when you look at a stat like that, I actually realise it's only the second season in the last 17 years that these two teams have actually been in the same division and one of those was a, was a couple of seasons ago when Fulham were up for a season and went straight back down and that season it finished 1-1 here at, at Craven Cottage but um, will be an important win for Leicester if they can get it they're in control at the moment leading 2-0 we're approaching the hour mark on 5 Live Sports Extra Ian Acho chests it down plays it to Pereira Pereira infield to Madison for oh, Anderson sliding in had to get that right and just got enough on the ball. Loftus cheek to Aina. Aina up against Justin. Little step over. Nutmeg pass finds Loftus cheek. Tries to flick it back to him. He's not there. Madison brings it away for Leicester. Harvey Barnes on his bike down the left. Reed's going to close him down. Barnes did brilliantly to get the pass back to Madison, who is dragged back by Aina. And Aina actually is going to get a yellow card for a for a cynical foul. Cynical. It's a team foul. He had to do it. He had to take the yellow. It's almost like a clever foul. <laughs> It almost gives Leicester time to just take a breather because Fulham have come out of this second half on top. Leicester will now control the ball, I think, from this free kick. And look, they'll look to play. But for me, I think Scott Parker will be pleased with the, how they've come out after the second half. And if you're Leicester, Charlie, you would have been expecting it as well, won't you? You probably will have expected we've got to ride a 15-minute storm here, probably. Yeah, because they, they're thinking Fulham can't come out and perform like that again. But look, for, for me, Leicester will look, look to control the game a bit more and Fulham, Fulham, looking at it, have got more bodies forward. I think they've looked at it first half and gone, right, how do we get Mitrovic more into the game, get more bodies close to him? And I think with Cavalera up close to him, that is helping in the second half. Tielemans, quick pass out to the left of Justin towards Barnes, can't turn away from Aina. Ball is cleared to the halfway line. Fulham snapping into a few more challenges as well, but why didn't they start the game like this? They're starting this from the second half, already 2-0 down. Come back to their goalkeeper, Ariola, under a dark night sky on the banks of the Thames with the floodlights shining brightly here at Craven Cottage and Anderson drilling it forward. Mitrovic gets a lovely little glance on that to work it to Robinson. First time cross from him, where's that going to end up? Edge of the box, Cavalero lays it off to Lookman, looking for Loftus-Cheek. He felt he was caught there grazed as he tried to get onto the ball on the edge of the box Leicester on the counter quickly with Ian Acho Fulham have men back to try and deal with that and Tossin eventually gets hold of the ball for Fulham oh dear bad pass misses Robinson that was Anderson's pass by the way not Tossin's and it goes out for a throw in 
And here come a couple of changes. All Brighton is coming on for Iosi Perez. And let's see what the other change is as well. Chowdhury's coming off and Mendy is coming on. I could have actually let the, uh, the PA do that, do that for you, but there we go. Double change for Leicester. So freshening things up. Chowdhury, rare start for him. Um, what, what did you make of his performance, Charlie? He didn't, didn't particularly shine, did he? No, he didn't particularly shine, but I'm not sure he had to, to be honest. It, yeah. was, that, it was that one side in the first half. But I'll tell you one thing away from his performance here. He's been linked to go away all throughout January. He can go on loan, he can do this, he can do that. And Brendan Rodgers has played him since he's come back and give him confidence. Yeah. Because he would have been thinking, oh, I'm going to move in this window. This is what I'm going to do, prolong the second half of, of the season, go and play games. And Brendan Rodgers has given the chance and said, go on, go and play for me. I'll tell you what, for 60 minutes, although he didn't shine, he didn't do nothing wrong. Harrison Reed, Fulham need to get the next goal. That is stating the blooming obvious. They're trailing by two goals to nil. And it's Lamina on the ball. Good run from him. Tielemans tries to stop him in his tracks. Can't do that. Aina chases it down the right-hand side. Takes Justin on. Crosses with his left foot. Oh, Mitrovic throws himself to the floor in the penalty area. Pereira is behind him, but that was, that was hopeful at best. And the ball just drifts behind for a goal kick. Although you say that, and then you, you look at replays, and there's, there's always something going on that you're, you're not quite sure about. So we will have a look, and the video assistant referee will have a look. But certainly from our position, they didn't look... No, no. <laughs> that, that was a, a move from a man who's dying for anything to get a goal. Yeah, yeah. He was thinking he might get to take the penalty if, if Fulham get one, although they've had the, he's missed one this season. They've had their problems. Lookman took that awful one uh, against West Ham. Mitrovic missed one at Sheffield United, it was. And Cavalero's missed one as well. They, they have had their problems from the spot this season. Still trailing 2-0. Iheanacho battling with Anderson, ball's high in the air, Anderson heads it forward, Tielemans chests it down, cross here to Justin, wide left to Barnes, Barnes bringing it infield, good ball, finds the runner Madison, Madison back to the edge of the area, Barnes right footed shot was blocked, it'll come back to Pereira though, Pereira dummies a shot, wide to Albrighton, back here, Joel oh, driven in, oh in, and the flag goes up, absolutely rifling finish from Pereira, smashing it off the bar that would have been another fantastic goal from Leicester not going to count left to right play from Leicester great down there from James Madison cut back to Harvey Barnes there's a great block from Harrison Reed. comes back to Ricardo. he plays in Albright who is, who is offside yeah but why wait again why wait just put the flag up he's clearly offside put the flag up man the finish was a slightly strange one from this position it looked like he roofed it he actually hit it low into the shin of Areola and went flying up into the roof of the net Goal doesn't count, Leicester still lead by two goals to nil and we're into the last half hour of the game. Aina's ball into the middle, dealt with by Johnny Evans, clears on the half volley and Aina has to acrobatically leap out of the way to make sure it doesn't touch him and go out for uh, a Leicester throw. Manchester City are still 2-0 up away to Burnley. Uh, other games this evening kicking off at 8.15, full commentary on Villa West Ham on Sports Extra and Liverpool Brighton uh, is commentary on Five Live this evening. Leeds Everton gets underway in about seven minutes time. Lookman, Mitrovic looking for that layoff little flick to Loftus Cheek. Couldn't find him. Soinchu clears. Reed forward to win a header. Aina wants to keep this in play if he can. Does just manage that wide on the right for Fulham, uh, taking on Justin, tried to knock it past Justin, collect it the other side and just knocked it straight out of play for the goal kick. Not happening tonight for Fulham. No, it's not happening. And I think it's just, you've got to give him the benefit of the doubt there, but the frustration for Mitrovic, I know he's desperate for the goal, but he's got to keep the basics right. He's trying to flick it round the corner, be the big target man you are. I know on a personal thing for me, when the goals have not come for me, I think, right, just get the nuts and bolts of your game. Run hard, tackle, and hold the ball up for your team. Stop trying to flick it around the corner one touch. Just looking at the Liverpool-Brighton uh, team news, out of the Five Live commentary, Quivine Kelleher in goal for Liverpool this evening, Adrian on the bench, and I've not seen Alisson's name there, so it looks like Alisson not involved. Ben Davis, new signing 
on the bench for Liverpool this evening. Full commentary uh, on BBC Radio 5 Live. Fulham nil, Leicester 2. Uh, Pereira, who thought he might have scored a third, ruled out for offside, but now doing his defensive duty, slides in on Lookman, goes out for a Fulham throw, Reed is caught on the back of the legs there, out by the touchline on the left-hand side, and it goes out uh, for a free kick to Fulham. They're at home to West Ham on Saturday, and then they go to Everton this month, at home to Sheffield United, which is going to be huge, and away to, to Palace as well. That's what's upcoming for, for Fulham. Lookman gets ready to take the free kick, and if they get themselves a goal here, then it is, it is game on, because they're only one behind and there's still plenty of time to play 25 minutes left in this second half so needs good delivery Lookman with it edge of the area headed away by Johnny Evans first to it is Reed. Mendy's chasing him two of the shortest fellas on the field up against each other Robinson inside his own half chips one to the left high in the air and Lookman's just given all Brighton a nudge in the back and uh, Leicester get the free kick in their right-back position, Charlie Austin. Yeah, that's an easy one for Lookman. I think he's, he's allowed Leicester off the hook there. As much as he's gone in, he's, he's just given a nudge in the back. There's no need for it. I, I really feel that sometimes Fulham are, are making their own mistakes and allowing Leicester to get out of situations too easy. Just having a look at some of the other lineups to see if there's any eye-catching team news. Leeds Everton half seven. Bamford, I know there was an injury concern over him, but he does start for Leeds in the game. He was absolutely brilliant uh, against Leicester, of course, who we're watching here at the weekend. Two assists and the goal as well. So I think Leeds fans will be pleased to hear that, that he's starting. Manchester City still two up away to Burnley. Throw in for Leicester on the right in this second half here at Craven Cottage. And the ball is thrown to Albright, who launches it rather unceremoniously up in the air. Mitrovic is able to play it low to Anderson. He goes for a quick long one forward to Cavalero wide on the left. It drops down and Lookman gets away from Tielemans. Looks to release Cavalero again. The ball eventually comes to him via a deflection. Robinson's there. Cross in. Corner for Fulham. And Lookman immediately goes running over uh, to go and grab that ball and take it for Fulham. It's a lot better for Mitrovic. Hold the ball up for your team. Get your team up the pitch. He holds it in. One, two touch. Set back. Anderson plays the long diag that we was crying out for in the first half. And look what comes up. Fulham have got a dangerous corner. Yeah, they've done more of it in the second half. Here's the corner then for Lookman into the near post. All Brighton's able to head it away. Reed back out to Lookman, who might get a second go. He just rolls it down the line for Loftus-Cheek. That is beyond Mitrovic. And actually, it's not even on the pitch. It's gone behind for a goal kick. So... That's a waste. First first corner comes in and doesn't beat the first man, and the second cross goes behind the byline. Let me tell you, Ali, as a centre-forward, that <laughs> is the most frustrating thing. How can you not beat the first man? The centre-halves have come all the way up. Look, we're 2-0 down. Let's get together. Just get a good corner in, good first contact from our team. We can't beat the first man. So let me tell you, that is frustrating. Who's the best crosser, Charlie? You've, who did you love playing with? Who was, gave you the best service? I played with James Ward-Prowse, oh, um, and, yeah. and that was a dream for a striker to put it in. But going back early on in my career also, I was very fortunate. I played with Kieran Trippier. Wow. Now, he right. can put a deadly ball in, even back then. <laughs> and for a striker, it's a dream. Just stand between them goalposts. Similar to the first goal Leicester scored tonight, Madison crossed it in, Iniacho in between the posts. Yeah. And that's where, it, that's where it was all done. Throw in Leicester. It's Charlie Austin with us here at Craven Cottage. Fulham trying and, and making a better fist of things in the second half but giving themselves so much to do Anderson dragging Ian Atro to the floor has to be a, a free kick that was a full-on wrestling move I suppose Anderson's making the point that, that Ian Atro is, is also holding on to him I, I'm sure Charlie's going to see this from the centre forwards point of view yeah I am he's clever strikers play he's got hold of him but, but Anderson is all over him he's, he's thinking look feel me feel me and, and that's it look it's, it's very good centre forward play probably more centre forward play that you'd think Mitrovic is but he's not doing that, to be honest with you. He's lucky the ref blew because Barnes was actually in. Yeah. Madison free kick. Barnes is there on the left. Madison goes for the chip down the inside left channel. Just too much on it. Lamina has it covered. Tielemans can't catch it. And the ball goes behind for a Fulham goal kick. So Dekadova Reed is going to be the last change for Fulham. Loftus Cheek comes off and comes off on our side of the field, which is. Uh, opposite to where the uh, the benches are and all the substitutions sit but that's the way it goes get off at the nearest point get off as quickly as you can because Fulham need to get back in this game 
and um, wasn't really, I mean, for a man of his talent, wasn't really able to impact the game this evening. No, he was ineffective today. First half, definitely. The, the front three was poor for Fulham. And even the second half, when he's tucked inside, not a lot's gone through him. It was Cavalero that was making anything happen. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you expect more fr from a man of his quality. Schmeichel claims a ball from Anderson. He was looking for that diagonal again wide to the left, but he just hit it too straight, and Schmeichel was able to come and catch it in his penalty area. Justin down the line, Aina side foots it forward. Schmeichel quickly off his line, outside his area, clears with his right foot, and that's going to end up right in front of us here. Uh, just on the awnings, the uh, the black and white Fulham awnings, which are draped over the seats in front of us. The one game I've been to this season where they had fans in, Fulham played Liverpool, and it was just a fantastic atmosphere. Just 2,000 in, but it, it felt like a, a full house, and just cannot wait until we are able to, to get back to... Uh, to full stadiums and I bet you must feel that Charlie playing oh massively and I have to comment on the 2000 being at West Brom before I left we played at Anfield and Liverpool 2000 2000 fans in the cop end yeah let me tell you they made hell of a racket <laughs> hell of a racket and you just miss yeah. miss that side of it the energy that all the fans do bring home and away fans and hopefully and I can't wait for them to come back in and, and support every footballer Deckard over Reed caught by Mendy and that would be a yellow card for the Leicester defensive midfielder stuck a leg out caught his man so Mendy goes in the book and at the moment still too comfortable really for Leicester doing a very professional job here uh, this evening just not been tested enough by Fulham and we're into the last 20 minutes of the game here on five live sports extra still Burnley nil Manchester City two goals from Jesus and Sterling this evening ball across the halfway line to Anderson do Fulham really believe they're going to get back into this game Lamina plays back to Tossin inside his own half Leicester have got everyone behind the ball inside their own half uh, Anderson with the outside of his right foot to Aina back to Anderson the crowd noise you can hear behind us obviously is that uh, is that fake crowd noise we use to sort of simulate the uh, the stadium atmosphere and uh, it does a job but it's obviously nothing like what Charlie was just talking about that he experienced at Anfield and what I experienced here at Craven Cottage a little while back throw in for Fulham they're trying to hurry it along Anderson throws it to Reed Reed plays the ball across the halfway line Lookman darting forward trying to get that back from Cavalero looking for Mitrovic but in winning the ball back he's fouled Tielemans and that is a free kick to Leicester inside their own half Leeds Everton underway uh, that is goalless and this at the moment Charlie particularly from Fulham's point of view is drifting isn't it as a, as a game and Leicester will be very happy with that for all they've done in their hard work in the second half Leicester have been unfazed they've stayed strong and, and they said right come on come and break us down albeit the Cavalero chance that went wide after about five minutes they've just been just been moving the ball side to side but without any purpose without any quality and Leicester are controlling the game Daniel Amate is getting ready to come on I can see over on the far side for Leicester Schmeichel's launched one downfield Tossin has to head it away Reed up to win a second header Tielemans bundled into and actually the free kick goes the other way because after Tielemans was uh, was knocked off the ball, committed a foul and Fulham get the free kick. So Man City two up at Burnley, Leicester two up at Fulham, Leeds and Everton underway is goalless. Rotherham Derby goalless, that kicked off at 7 o'clock in the Championship. Hamilton 1, Ross County 0, Motherwell 2, Dundee United 0. And those games will also be moving into the last 15 minutes in the Scottish Premiership. 7.45 kick-off in about 10 minutes' time. Rangers 20 point lead Celtic do have the game in hand but not really going to make a difference with a 20 point deficit Rangers at home to St Johnston tonight throw in Fulham Leicester think it should have been theirs Fulham take it inside the Leicester half thrown back into the Fulham half and they come forward here with Tossin Robinson makes a run Tossin plays back into his own half again to Anderson Anderson across the halfway line to Harrison Reed. Reed floats on forward beyond Mitrovic, headed away. Lamina's first time ball to Robinson, controls it on his thigh. Thought he was passing it back to Tossin. Tossin left it, so he had to go and get it. Cross to, to Reed. Reed to Aina. 
looking for Deca Dover Reed now down the right hand side little shoulder shake from him Mendy sticks with him down by the byline wants to win a corner and has done it for Fulham that's probably the best he could have hoped for from that position yeah but it's a bit of urgency from Fulham this time gone from left to right and Reed's yeah, he's had one touch and passed it out here to Aina. He, he would be the man. I see him earlier, about a minute ago, raising his arms. It's pretty much the same as Robertson in the first half. They need to get the ball wide. But Devaco Reid does so well, and look, he, he does well to get a corner. Quiet evening for Harvey Barnes is over. Uh, Daniel Amate comes on for him. Barnes, before de defending the set piece, just hops off the pitch, walks behind the goal and heads back to the dugouts. Corner comes in from Lookman's right foot, Schmeichel, good claim. Shouted for it early, backpedalling, jumps up and grabs it with both hands. Fulham nil, Leicester two. Schmeichel jogs out to the edge of his penalty area, thinks about bowling it out overarm like his, uh, his old man used to do, sling it half the length of the pitch, but he's underarmed it to Soyuncu, to Justin, back to Schmeichel. Schmeichel with his left foot gets underneath that clearance, up in the air it goes. Tossin got a little nudge from Ian Acho there. Tielemans falls over. No free kick given. Lookman plays it to Robinson. Robinson, ball with his right foot, headed away on the edge of the Leicester penalty area. All Brighton chases. He's kept that in play as he as well he has, but can't find Ian Acho with the ball forward. Anderson is back there and plays back to his goalkeeper, Ariola. Uh, here's Reed. Coming up to the halfway line, forward to Robinson. Robinson's first time ball back to Anderson, across to Reed. Leicester backing off as Harrison Reed comes scampering forward. Wide to Lamina. Decadova Reed tries to take that on the turn. He's tackled as he does so. Leicester will be dangerous on the counter here in the last 15 minutes of the game. And Marte. Now Ian Acho lays it off to Justin. Justin up to the halfway line, gives it to Tielemans, across to Mendy, short, stocky figure in his all-blue Leicester kit, wide to Justin, back to Mendy, Fulham chasing in vain at the moment, Leicester just keeping them at arm's length, Tielemans to Mendy, inside his own half, Mendy to Tielemans, back to Soyuncu, Michael gives him a, an option inside his own penalty area, takes a couple of touches, the big Dane, right-footed pass all the way across here to Amate, Amate down the lines, lovely, Possession football from Leicester. Now it's given away by Pereira. His clearance hits a, a Fulham player. Lookman's trying to win a 50-50 on the touchline. Goes out for a throw into to Fulham on the left. But Leicester just keeping the ball beautifully there, Charlie. Keeping it, keeping it beautiful, moving it from side to side. But I almost think they've made a change. I think they've gone to a back five. Three centre-halves. Amati just, just slotted in next to Johnny Evans. I don't know if Brendan Rodgers has seen something. Right. But they're getting down, the, getting down the flanks too easy. So let's put a five in there and control the 2-0 two two lead. Here's Lamina. Decadova Reed down the right. Cavalero lays it back to Decadova Reed on the move again. Looking bright and then overhits the cross. Was it a cross? Was it a shot? I'm not sure. It goes flying over the bar and it goes behind for a goal kick. Yeah, it, it, do you know what? When the subs that Fulham have made, and, and Scotty Parker would, would be pleased with what the, the energy they have brought. Let me tell you, it is tough when you come on into a game and you're 2-0 down as a player and you're coming off the bench like Div has just done and you think, right, I've got to, how can I affect this game? I can run and obviously you've got to say, oh, I'm going to try and score and get the team back into it. But the energy he's brought so far is certainly giving the Fulham lads a lift. Scott Parker chewing furiously on the sidelines on the opposite side of the field to us. His team's 2-0 down. And looking like it's going to be 11 Premier League games without a win. The ball brushes off the back of Aina from Schmeichel's clearance. And goes out for a throw-in to Leicester. Uh, here's, here's the bad stat for Fulham fans. So this is their 21st game of the season. And so far they've only got the two wins in the league against West Brom here and away to Leicester. Only two clubs have had fewer than three wins after 21 games, which is where Fulham would be and gone on to beat relegation from the Premier League. West Brom did it under Brian Robson in 2004-2005, and Fulham did it under Roy Hodgson, I think, 2007-2008. It is not easily done. Reed's ball forward. Fulham still fighting to try and get back into this game. Trailing 2-0, Deckard over Reed, hauls back Mendy. Will he get booked for that? A few shrill blasts on the whistle from, from Robert Jones. You, um, I was just reminding myself of your career, Charlie. I mean, obviously, 
going down is never nice, but in that QPR team that went down, you managed to score 18 goals in that team that season, which is some effort, actually, isn't it? Yeah, it was some effort. I scored 18 goals and missed two penalties. So I think, I'd have, <laughs> yeah, I don't forget them. I don't forget them. I, would have, I think I'd have joined a, a club where only four, five, six players, I think, are involved in the teams that have scored 20 goals and, and been relegated. So, really? Yeah, it was good for me. I really enjoyed my first season in the Premier League to score 18 goals and, and it kind of propelled me on to be the, be the player I am now. It's a good little quiz question, that one. Six. So it's, you think it's six players, do you, who've gone down, but they've had a striker who scored 20 goals? 20, and, I think so. Andy, I love that, I love that. Andy oh. Johnson being one at Crystal Palace. Yeah, and OK. And I think Darren Bent being the other. OK, Mitrovic on the edge of the area for Fulham. That's a good ball. Deco David Reed shoots, goes for the near post, hits the side netting. Fulham want a corner, and they get a corner. So just in sliding challenge was important they very nearly found a way back in there yeah and it's a great turn it's a great turn there by Cavalero again link up play Mitrovic one touch two touch then rolls Divock Origi in, and it's a great last minute tackle for Justin yeah he's had a great game again scored at one end keeping them out at the other end uh, Hamilton one Ross County one Jordan White equaliser in the 81st minute Motherwell two Dundee United one Ryan Edwards has given Dundee United hope in that game also in the 81st minute Lookman's corner Justin's there again heads it away to the edge of the area well controlled by Albrighton facing his own goal turns clears with his left foot Lamina's got it covered on the halfway line into the last 10 minutes of the game at Craven Cottage Fulham nil Leicester 2 Leicester heading third in the Premier League table latest in the Premier League Manchester City 2-0 up at Burnley still both goals in the first half and uh, Leeds and Everton still goalless early on at Ellen Road that one kicked off at, at half seven here's Reed. Reed with the uh, short, little, hurried steps to his right. Ball's played back to Lamina. Dances away from Ian Acho. Lamina to Tosin. Tosin to his left and Robinson back to Tosin. Inside the Leicester half, Ian Acho closes in on Anderson. Lamina comes in to help. Plays a little one-two. Tosin now brings it forward. Leicester invites him forward and saying, let's see what you can do with the ball to try and find a way through. Cavalero lays it off to Reed. Reed's going to look for Mitrovic with the curling cross. Well, he's up well, Mitrovic. He's a long way from goal, heads it down and wide behind for the goal kick. Leicester do so well there defensively. They hold their shape and allow Fulham just... Frustratingly, they pass it into the edge of the box. Cavalero bounces back into Reed. He bounces back out. The ball comes out to Harrison Reed on the right hand side, and all he can do is put the ball in the box. And, and if you're looking at it, it's Mitrovic versus three centre halves. And although he wins the first header, header, he was never getting enough on it to put it past Michael. Goal kick for Leicester. Uh, Everton lead at Ellen Road. Gilfie Sigurdsson has scored in the ninth minute of the game. Leads nil, Everton one. Everton having been beaten at Goodison Park by Newcastle at the weekend. So good response early on against Leeds. But they'll no doubt be tested by Bielsa's side as, as everyone is. Ariola on the ball, the Fulham goalkeeper, seven minutes to play. Here's Lamina. Aina starts to make a run down the right. Can they find a goal just to get us on the edge of our seats for the last five minutes or so? Anderson with his right foot. Leicester desperate to keep the clean sheet, secure the three points but with the defence, the goal intact. Aina to Lamina. Lamina plays back to Anderson. Anderson's diagonal up towards Mitrovic. Little flick on from him. New Robinson was coming up behind. Robinson stretches, plays the pass back here. Finds Reed. Lookman on the turn. Lookman forward to the edge of the box. High foot Soyuncu edge of the area. Referee has given it the other way, though. Two high feet. Aina... Bumps into Soyuncu as he cleared. Soyuncu was caught. Free kick for Leicester. That's better from Fulham. But it is better from Fulham. But just before then, Anderson plays the ball in on a diag. And more like a hit and hope into Mitrovic. He's there with his arms up. And then within five seconds later, the ball comes back and he hits exactly the same ball. Mitrovic actually goes and wins this one. Uh, which which helps them, which helps Fulham. He needs to be that big target man. He's, he's, he's the biggest name in their team. He, he needs to perform. And in these games where let Fulham are not performing, he needs to be the one that drags his team up the pitch. 26 goals in the championship last season, Alexander Mitrovic. Frustrating night for him tonight, not had the service. Aina heads it down the line. Good jump to win the header out for a Leicester throw. Mendy's going to take his time and decides he doesn't want to take that throw just to, to waste another... 10-15 seconds, he's going to leave it for, for Justin. 
On the way then on, on Sports Extra, 8.15 kickoff, we've got Villa West Ham. And over on Five Live at 8.15, Liverpool, the defending champions at home to Brighton. Not seen much of Madison in the second half. Plays it to Ian Nacho, flag stays down. Ian Nacho let the ball run away from him and it goes out for a goal kick to Fulham. Billy Mackay has scored for Ross County. Hamilton one, Ross County two. So Ross County have come from behind to lead 2-1. Bringing the ball forward is Lamina. Cross to Tossin. Five minutes to play, moving into the 86th minute of the game. Here's Aina, dummies across, back to Anderson, wants that ball to come to him quicker. It's been flat, really, from, from Fuller. Better second half, but still just not enough to, to threaten Leicester. And Leicester sitting very deep now, all 11 men behind the ball. Anderson runs forward, plays it to Aina. Aina's just going to swing across him with his left foot. Evans saw that coming, steps forward, heads it away. Tossing gets it on the on the halfway line, plays it to Reed. Reed runs forward. Mendy comes towards him. Reed plays it to Anderson on his right. Another high swinging cross, looking for Mitrovic. Jumps with Amate, knocks him to the floor. Ball deflects to Dekadova. Reed. aina has got underneath the cross. Got to be Schmeichel's that. Up he goes. Mitrovic bumps him again. Schmeichel goes down, lands heavily. They have a little conversation about it. Schmeichel wasn't best pleased about it. He's got the ball in his hands, no free kick given. There we go, Charlie. Mitrovic has to challenge for that, but again, it's Fulham. They're almost telling Leicester what they're going to do. Yeah. Ball wide and just hang it up there. Leicester are set. I don't think Fulham have actually realised there's three centre-halves on the pitch. Nice ball forward from James Justin with the outside of his right foot. That's brilliantly dealt with by Anderson. He had three Leicester players around him there, and he managed to shake them all off. Aina, that's a long ball forward, easily chested down by... Johnny Evans. Three minutes to play, plus added time. Fulham nil, Leicester two. Paul Brighton, clever turn on the right on the halfway line. Ball goes out for a, for a Leicester throw. Feel as well, Charlie, that Leicester have just done all that they've needed in the second half. They've not pushed it, have they? No, and, and like, it's easy to say James Madison's not been in, in the game in the second half. He, he has in the way that he's controlled his position. He's allowed... Fulham to have the ball, knowing that his defensive players behind him are solid enough to, to keep them out. And I feel it's been a great second half performance from Leicester on the flip side of them not having the ball. Fulham have it. Difficult to think of, of any real chance. Deco Dover Reed's shot that was blocked by Justin into the side netting. Schmeichel made the save from the tossing header in the first half from a set piece. Other than that, they really haven't looked like scoring. Lookman's ball in. Dekadova Reed plays it into the edge of the box. Not much room there though. Leicester make the tackle. Tielemans brings it away and then Cavallero in desperation to win it back actually rakes the back of Tielemans' legs, takes him down. The Belgians hurt and Cavallero quite rightly gets the uh, gets the yellow card. And, and I think that's in frustration from Cavallero. He's got the ball on the edge of the box. He's trying to get half a yard, but again, too many touches. He loses play to Tillemans, who's on the break now, and that is a sore one. Yeah. He, he's away, and, and he's caught him down the back of the calf. And let me tell you, Tillemans is down. He, he's up now, but he's took the sting, sting out of the game now. There'd be no urgency from Leicester to play this ball. Heading towards the end, then, of these uh, six o'clock kickoffs in the Premier League. Manchester City 2 0 up at Burnley, going three points clear at the top of the table. Ball into Ian Atro from Justin. Ian Atro trying to slide it through to Albrighton. Intercepted by Tossin. Fulham still coming here. Reed in the middle of the pitch. Brilliant slide challenge on him from Mendy. Tielemans wants it immediately. Left-footed pass is wide here to Albrighton. Looks up. Didn't see anyone in the middle. Decided to hold on to it. Plays it back to Tielemans. We're into the 90th minute of the game. And it's still Fulham nil. Leicester 2. And it's been a real cruise for Leicester. Got their two goals in the first half. Uh, Ian Acho and James Justin just before half-time. Well worth seeing that Justin goal. Really good team build-up for that one. And they've controlled it in the second half. Now, James Madison might want to make something happen. He might be able to. Oh, unusually for him, he's overhit the pass. Albright was in acres of space, couldn't find him. <laughs> yeah, but once, he didn't go to him. He's tried it with the outside of the boot and to play Albright in almost. He, he's better off just passing it with the instep. Yeah. It's unlike James Madison, that. But I have been very impressed with James Justin tonight. Defensively, he's been very solid. He made that great tackle on Devaco Um uh, It's been superb. He's been solid. And then he's capped off a good game of getting a goal. Throw in towards Mitrovic. Clever little flick header from him back to Cavallero. Added time will go up shortly. 
Fulham still need two goals here and they've not looked like scoring one Lamina with a no look pass to Anderson Anderson's low bouncing ball Johnny Evans will gobble that up all day long side foots it away tossing heads it forward Leicester looking dangerous on the counter again can they find a third to kill it Ian Acho wanted it through the middle All Brighton plays it to Tielemans on the right three minutes of added time at the end of this game here's Pereira tackled by Reed. the ball comes off Reed and goes out for a throw into Leicester on the right Charlie Austin he's good play from Leicester they're trying to take the sting out of the game which they are but they're controlling it they're using their experience they're winning throws they're knocking the ball off the Fulham off the Fulham players and it's going out they're trying to win free kicks and they're just running the clock down I just feel like Fulham have, have huffed and puffed have got absolutely nowhere Brentford Bristol City underway in the championship half time Rotherham nil Derby nil and we're approaching the full time whistle here and we are looking at a Leicester win that'll put them on 42 points two behind Manchester United having both played 22 games three behind Manchester City who've actually played a game less they're leading 2-0 at Burnley and that game will also be over shortly goal kick for Fulham already played a minute of the three minutes of added time so we're now looking at two goals in two minutes to snatch a miraculous point here for Fulham Reed wide to the left played back to Reed in central midfield short pass from him across to Tossin Tossin to Joachim Anderson ball forward blocked by Ian Acho Anderson shouts for a handball the ball has run to Tossin so advantage is played we continue Reed ball out to the left hand side driven across by Lookman towards Aina intercepted on the edge of the Leicester area Ian Acho Gives it to Tielemans. Forward to Tielemans again. Herring up the pitches. Reed to try and win it. Anderson plays back to his goalkeeper, Ariola. All over at Turf Moor. Burnley nil. Manchester City two. Final score. So Manchester City march on. Three points clear at the top of the table. Full time whistle approaching here as well. Minute to go. And it's going to be Leicester's night. Anderson's ball forward. Soinchu deals with it. Heads it up in the air. Mitrovic jumps, nods it down. Aina challenges. Justin is there. Clears it with his right foot on the half volley. It's one-on-one, -on -one actually, for a second. Ian Acho tries to knock it past Lamina. Lamina's too quick for him. Gets to the ball first. Plays it across the box and finds Joachim Anderson. Last chance for Fulham, then, to try and salvage something from the evening. Ball is played back by Lookman. Now to Reed. Reed scurrying forward to the halfway line. Lamina wide right to Dekodova Reed. 20 seconds to go. Diagonal ball towards Mitrovic. Gives Amate a nudge. Spotted by the referee. That's going to be that, Charlie. If that action could sum up Fulham's performance, then it did. A ball's come in and Mitrovic has given away a soft, pointless, no need foul. That just kills the game. That, that for me just sums up Fulham's night. They have been they have been really poor tonight. Yeah, if we're gonna go for some uh, some unnecessary alliteration Leicester lively Fulham flat and uh, Charlie's made his, his commentary debut with us on 5 Live this evening I promise you Charlie the more games you do I think we'll see more exciting ones than this one Leicester have, have really controlled this from start to finish second goal was a joy to watch in particular all over Leicester win Fulham without a win in 11 Premier League games a really solid professional job done by Leicester Goals in the first half from Ian Acho and Justin, both of them created by the mastery of Madison, if we're going to continue that alliteration, Charlie, because the, the two assists that he provided for the two goals were exceptional, weren't they? Exceptional. The first, the first one was a striker's dream ball, just being be in the middle of the goal and, and he'll find you. I think that's what he kind of said. Trust me, I'll put it in there. The second one is a great team goal for three quarters of the pitch, then they give him the ball. His next action is to run towards the goal and then do a Cruyff turn that falls both both Fulham defenders and then nonchalantly pass it to James Justin, who, who has a great first touch, pass the goalkeeper and rolls it into an empty net. Tonight he was superb. You can see the two managers actually in in-depth conversation uh, coming off the pitch here, talking tactics, talking about the game, and Scott Parker will pick up loads from Brendan Rodgers. Watching that performance tonight, Charlie, and I've seen Fulham quite a lot in recent weeks, and that they've, they've been a lot better than that. that. That really makes you worry for Fulham, I think, in terms of staying up, doesn't it? Watching on that, that would make you worry. Where's the next goal coming from? Where, where's the next big performance coming from? Watching that tonight, 
if you was Brighton players and Brighton fans watching that tonight, I'm not sure you'd be too worried about what is below you coming from Fulham. I think you'd be worried about what, what, t what your team performance is going to bring going forward. Yeah. Bottom three at the moment, they're getting cut adrift. Fulham played 21, 14 points. West Brom played 22, 12 points. Sheffield United played 22, 11 points. But Fulham there at the top of those bottom three are full seven points behind Brighton and eight points behind Newcastle and Burnley. So Leicester next for them. Uh, they're away to Wolves on Sunday. Fulham will need a much better performance in a London derby at home against West Ham. And then Leicester host Brighton uh, in the FA Cup next week coming up here on five live sports extra 8 15 kickoff it's villa west ham over on five live it'll be liverpool brighton let's just check in on the latest on the leeds game which kicked off at half past seven last we heard uh, they were trailing everton by a goal to nil at home that is still the case sigurdsson has scored the goal and i think the last thing to do uh, is say thanks charlie how, how did you uh, how did you find that sitting this side and watching them play play that side? No, it was enjoyable. It's, it's completely different being sat here. It's definitely easier from here than what it is down there. But no, <laughs> it was enjoyable. I wish Fulham give a little bit more of accountable for themselves and give Leicester a bit more run for their money. However, you can't take away from what Leicester produced first half. It was a, a great display. Yep, Leicester again just showing their Champions League credentials this evening. So my thanks to Charlie Austin. You're going to hear plenty more from him uh, on commentaries and, and Five Live and Five Live Sports Extra. And Charlie, good luck with the rest of the season as well with, with QPR. Keep, uh, keep banging in the goals. Yeah, top man. Thank you very much. <laughs> Brilliant. That's Charlie Austin. Uh, thank you very much for listening this evening. So we're not far away from our second commentary on Five Live Sports Extra tonight. That'll be Villa West Ham, Liverpool Brighton over on Five Live. And we leave you at Craven Cottage with this full-time score. Fulham nil, Leicester 2.